If Montana State wants to win the Big Sky Conference title, then today's clash with Eastern Washington is a must win. The Eagles are led by quarterback Eric Meyer. He's thrown for more than 3,000 yards and 22 touchdowns this season. On the flip side, Travis Lule has become the Bobcats all-time passing leader with more than 10,000 yards through the air. Emotions are high and it's the Governor's Cup today in Cheney. Big Sky Football is next on the Montana Sports Network. From Woodward Field in Cheney, Washington, this is Bobcat Game Day. This afternoon, it's Big Sky Conference football as the Eagles from Eastern Washington host the Bobcats from Montana State. Today's pregame show is being hosted by the Montana Army National Guard. Hi again, everyone. Chris Byers, as always, joined by Dean Alexander. And Dean, with two weeks to go in the Big Sky Conference race, one has to only look at the standings to see the importance of this afternoon's game. You bet. Two losses already for the Eagles. They lose today. They are done. No hope for any tiebreakers or anything. The Bobcats with just one loss, they could lose and still be in the hunt. But if the Bobcats lose and the Eagles win here today, guess what? Then it's a whole new scenario. Well, we're stating the obvious here on the offensive side of the football, but for both teams, we are going to see the top two quarterbacks in the Big Sky Conference. Without a doubt. Eric Meyer, Travis Lule, similar stats. The difference being Lule will run with the football, has more stats there, more in total offense, but easily the two best four pro scouts here taking a look at him today. Well, you talk about Travis being able not only to throw but run the football. On the other side, Eric Meyer has a dynamic wide receiver to throw the ball to. Oh, not only can he throw it to him, he's got a guy who can catch it. Started out as a running back here, and he is a nightmare. The MSU defensive coaches don't want to say much about what they've designed to try and stop Eric Kimball. All right, and for Montana State offensively, all the talk around Travis Lule, but guess what? Last week, a 100-yard effort on the ground, first time this season for the Bobcats. Evan Groves, not that they found him, they knew what they had, they just needed him to block a little bit better. But he got the ball, found some cracks, and he's the first Bobcat this year to rush for over 100. If he can do that again today, guess what? It could be bright lights and big time for the Bobcats. Montana State, a much better team offensively when they run the football on the ground, and defensively, the emergence of that Bobcat defense keyed by Nick Marutis last week. Nick Marutis, Bozeman's own. Boy, did he make some big pops last week. He has been the man. A broken leg a year ago came back, and Nick Marutis, as a senior, leader he knows where the ball is he knows who he needs to tackle and boy when he dumps them they're dumped well we got a good one for you this afternoon eastern washington and montana state now for the keys to the game let's go down below to chris bach definitely a playoff atmosphere here as both teams in a must-win situation i'll tell you how they'll do it with our montana ford keys to the game first for eastern washington they need to simply play their game they're ranked number one in the country in offense at 500 yards per contest Second, they need to get some help from that defense that got them ranked number one preseason. They've been a little banged up, but they need them to step up in this game. And finally, they need to show up. This has been a tale of two teams this year, a team that's lost to Weaver and Idaho State, but they beat the Grizz in Missoula. Now for the Montana State Bobcats, the secondary must perform. Eric Meyer averages 370 yards per game, and if they don't want to get torched, the DBs have to have a good game. Second, Travis Lule has to be better than Eric Meyer in this contest. He's just as talented, but he has to prove it. Finally, the Cats must win on the road in a must-win game if they want to do anything in playoffs. That'll do it for our Montana Forward Keys to the game and conclude our Montana Army National Guard pregame show. We'll be back to kick things off right after this. And another great day for a Bobcat victory. However, the weather may be a little iffy as we're looking at about a 40% chance of precipitation, 43 for a game time temperature, snow level coming down to about 4,000 feet. Back with the kickoff after this. Hi, I'm Eric Kinneman. And I'm Joe Baker. You know, a few years ago, Eric and I were teammates here at Montana State University. As members of Cap Football, we live the values of honor, integrity, loyalty, and personal courage. 
As a team, Bobcat football breeds pride, tradition, and camaraderie. Today, Joe and I carry on these values as proud members of the Montana Army National Guard. The Montana Guard has a proud and stored history of serving our great state and nation. You too can be a member of this team. And every once in a while, we still get the chance to lay the head on someone. Hey, Bobcat fans. The Billings Hotel and Convention Center has a package just for you. For just $68, you get one night stay with a room for four complimentary continental breakfast plus water slide passes and two passes for comedy night. When you call, just ask for the Bobcat Special. The Billings Hotel and Convention Center, conveniently located off the King Avenue Interchange, has all the services you expect. Dine in comfort in the restaurant or take a dip in the pool when you take advantage of the Bobcat Special at the Billings Hotel and Convention Center. Why have some of Montana's largest businesses switched to Transaria? Maybe because they are Montana-owned. Or because Transaria provides service and products second to none. Mostly because Transaria can provide it all. Private networks, internet, and now VOIP. VOIP allows businesses to turn the internet into a valuable communication tool. The telephone, long distance or local, and clear as traditional service. Save up to 30% on your phone bill. Get rid of multiple bills and get VOIP from Transaria. The simple solution is Transaria. Call today. Max Media of Montana is taking Montana TV to the max. Max Media of Montana's statewide television group offers you maximized viewing choices with more stations and top programming in each market. Our Montana News Network delivers comprehensive local news, weather, and sports from around our state. The Montana Sports Network puts you in the stadium with Montana State Bobcat football broadcasts. We are Montana. We are Max Media. Back at Woodward Field in Cheney, Washington for this afternoon's Big Sky Conference football game as the Bobcats get set to take on the Eagles from Eastern Washington. A key league matchup between these two powers in the Big Sky Conference and the winner, Dean, most assuredly has a chance Montana, to get into that uh, championship mix. We take a look at the series between the two and overall Eastern Washington really dominating Dean head-to-head, -head, winning 19 and losing 9. Yeah, Eastern Washington, uh, as uh, one of their press releases said, simply as the numbers show, has had uh, their way with the Bobcats of Montana State University. Here's the officials for this afternoon's game as we are just about set to go. Bruce Palmer, headlinesman, is Glenn Hepner, Greg Wilson, David Clark, Ken Sarna, and Joe Johnston will be the back judge for this afternoon's game. The Eagles win the coin toss and will take the uh, kickoff to start the game. We'd like to welcome our friends in the Spokane area watching on Fox 28. Welcome to this afternoon's game between Eastern Washington and MSU. Just about set to go from Woodward Field. Big Sky Conference football. Tyler Bolton set to kick it away. The Eagles will receive. Bolton's kick coming down at the goal line, and this will be down. And Eastern Washington will start first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at the Eastern Washington offense now for the Eagles as we get set to go in this first quarter of play. Up front, the big guys, Perkins, Hani, Carlson, Alfred, and Zach Wazelinski. Kind of a different thing uh, when Eastern won the coin toss and elected to go right away on offense. And of course, uh, leading the way for Eastern Washington, Eric Meyer, the 6'2", 210-pound senior out of California, Eastern's all-time career passing leader. Eagles with the football to start the game, first and 10 from the 20-yard line. I think as you can see also that uh, both ball clubs, at least here to start, uh, break on the weather from what it was yesterday, a little bit wet and windy. Uh, wind is not as heavy right now as it was uh, yesterday. That's their first time out of the half. And already a timeout for the Montana State defense. They didn't like the set that uh, Eastern Washington came with. Let's take a look now at how the Bobcats will line up on the defensive side of the football. Operating again out of the 3-4. There's the three guys up front. Chris Coloni, David Siatonga, and Aaron Papich. The linebacking court's a good one. Nick Maruta, Seppi King, Mac Mullahan, and Clive Lowe are the linebackers. And in the backfield, the corners, Kaim Hunter and Corey Austin getting the start today. Safeties are Ryan Force and Toff Grenfell out of Arrowhead, California. And there's head coach Mike Kramer, who Dean knows all about. Cheney Washington spent six years as the head coach of Eastern Washington back in the 1990s. You bet. And before that, uh, assistant here moved on up into the head job, and one of his former assistants, Paul Wolf, 
is obviously the head guy here looking at his sixth straight winning season as the head guy at Eastern. And they're, uh, they're pretty close friends, obviously. But uh, today it's a different thing here, at least for 60 minutes. And take a look at the quarterback comparisons, two of the very best ever in the Big Sky Conference, Travis Lule and Eric Meyer. So first and ten now after the timeout. Eagles get the football to start the game. They'll stay on the ground, and here's Cole with some running room up over the 20 to the 22. Cole comes in 854 yards on the season, averaging 4.3 yards per carry. Ryan Force in on the stop for the Bobcats. I think you saw something right there. We'll watch all afternoon. I don't think the footing was what he hoped it would be or thought it would be when he tried to make that cut. So uh, the Bobcats got a little bit of help there when uh, Cole couldn't maintain his uh, balance making the cut. 3,200 yards plus in the passing department for Meyer. 22 big touchdowns as it is second and eight now from the 22. This time, Myers straight back to pass at his 15, looks across the middle, has a man in a first down, and a nice catch for first down yardage is Tyler Coleman up over the 40 to the 41, Epi King, and on the stop for the Bobcats. Well, the other thing that has been a problem for them, uh, for the Eagles, is that Myers has been dumped a few times this year by a couple of teams that have beaten them, but that time he had more than enough time. Uh, he just surveyed uh, all of his options and halfway sidearmed it over there, and the former baseball pitcher burned the fastball right there for the first down. First down call, slipped and fall, incomplete pass up near midfield. That was intended for V Hill, the second leading receiver on this Eagles uh, team, and they are talented outside. You take a look at uh, V Hill, 5'9, 185 pounder and uh, he'll catch a lot of footballs for Eastern Washington. He has two of the longest in history here, a 77-yarder and an 82-yarder, so he can go deep on you. He does have the good foot speed. Everybody talks about Kimball, but I'll tell you what, he's, uh, he's not bad himself. Here comes the blitz for Montana State. Meyer gets out of it. He's got first down yardage and more inside the 40 to the 38-yard line as Eric Miles scrambles for the first down and Eastern Washington down inside the 40-yard line. Normally that's what you want to do is try and flush him, but as you flush him, you want someone to tackle him. Well, they flushed him, and the Bobcats dropped into pass coverage. And obviously you'll see that uh, as he surveys it quickly, he gets away, and then there's nobody home. Everybody had dropped deep in pass coverage, and uh, Meyer wisely sees the contact coming and avoids it and just gets out of bounds. First and 10 from the 37, just underway in the first quarter. Cole on the draw play. Breaks one tackle, but then ridden down, maybe a gain of one on the play. So we'll call it second and nine for Eastern Washington on this opening drive. Cole uh, transferring down from D1 Oregon State, which made him eligible immediately, and he was the second leading rusher as a sophomore at Oregon State. Uh, highly regarded running back out of high school. You know, Dean, you look at their numbers offensively and you wonder how they even lose a game. I mean, they come in as the number one offensive unit in the country in 1AA, over 500 yards a game, and yet a 5-4 and four record. Here's Meyer now on a straight drop. Looks, looks. This time's going to get ridden down. Good job by Montana State in the secondary. Clive Lowe in on the quarterback sack, and a loss on the play back to the 42-yard line. That time, uh, give Clive Lowe credit, but also, as you said, give credit to the secondary because uh, Meyer had to go a counter to a little bit longer than he wanted to try and find a receiver, and then when he decided to dance out of it, he danced right into the arms of Clive Lowe for the Bobcats, and that gives him a third and long, which uh, obviously a great shape for the Bobcats to get a stop here. They're out of field goal range. Well, that's a loss of five on the play, so third and 14 from the 41. Pull the single back. Cats come with the blitz, fired across the middle and incomplete. Good job by the Montana State secondary as that ball intended for Coleman. Force got in front yep. of him. Force got the hand around there and just knocked it away. So the Bobcats come up with the stop on the initial possession for Eastern Washington. I guess that would be the old Ben don't break defense yeah. that time. They were on a move, a couple of big plays. Most observers figure this will be an offensive battle this afternoon. They're not uh, looking for the defenses. Uh, defense would make a difference. But. Donker set to kick it away. Force will let it go. And this one dying inside the five on a great job by the Eastern Washington special teams as Donkers takes it inside the five-yard line. And MSU will start deep in their own end. Let's take a look now at the Montana State 
starting offense this afternoon. Up front, it's Jensen and Berkland. Jeff Bolton, the center, Figueroa, and Hurst over on the right side. Backs and receivers, Evan Groves, 100 yards plus last week. Rick Gatewood, Chaz Gwynn, Murray, and Elliot Barnhart from Broadus is the tight end. And, of course, at quarterback is senior Travis Lule, the 6'2 senior out of Almsville, Oregon. 542 yards of offense against Eastern last year. So first and 10, the ball on the four-yard line as Montana State takes over for its first possession. Grove straight up the middle, has running room, up over the 15 to the 20-yard line, and a great job by Evan Groves and a first down carry. Well, there's what you need right there. That was the big question mark. Could he pick it up where he left off last week? And obviously, judging by the first play, the answer is yes. Peach Lane, Piffero, and Hanson up front for the Eastern Washington defensive line, the linebackers. Henneberg, Quick, and Nick Denby, and they're good ones. We'll talk more about them later in the secondary. Hendricks, Jarrett, Brandon Keeler, and Danique Ford at the corner out of Moreno, California. First and 10 from the 19 after the run by Evan Groves. Montana State with the football as Lule back to pass for the first time, broken up, intended for Gatewood. No place to go there, uh, really, not even an opening. He was almost trying to force that one in there. Edinburgh, uh, the junior out of Muckle Teal, uh, was the one in front of him getting the hand up there. But uh, uh, Groves, obviously, with the big run, giving him a little bit of room to operate. And I think this is almost like a good card game, too. Both offensive coordinators trying to uh, outguess the defense on their respective teams because everybody knows what Lule and uh, Meyer could do, so you have to have a surprise or two probably in the play calling. Second and 10 from the 19 after the incomplete pass. Lule straight back to pass inside his 15. Now pulls the ball down. Still looking and he's going to be hit right at the 20 yard line and taken down for no gain on the play. Great job by the Eastern Washington defense. Anneberg again in on the stop. And it will bring up third and log. Dean, we talked about the importance of this game in relation to the Big Sky Conference. And so many things can happen over the last two weeks. But right now for Eastern Washington, you got to figure they need to win the conference outright. They need two wins to close the season. Yeah, they've got, uh, they have to get this one being their last league game right. because they have two losses already. They can't go to three. And the Bobcats, meanwhile, actually could lead, lose this and still be in the hunt, but also with the win, Eastern with those two, and they hold all the tiebreakers right now. So a win puts them in good shape even with two losses. Well, that was the big the big plus for Eastern Washington is they do own the tiebreaker should they win this game. Of course, going into Missoula and beating Montana earlier this season. So now it is third and eight from the 21 for Montana State. Ball right at the 20-yard line. Lule with the quick drop, looks across the middle, now fires incomplete to Barnhart, but that's going to be short of the first down. Barnhart with the catch at the 26, but it'll be three yards short. Quick in on the stop for Eastern Washington. He set up right where he needed to to get the ball. That's the good news. The bad news is he set up about two yards shy of the first down sticks. Lule had a little bit of time to get it there. It's a relative safe pass, but... No room to run when he gets it, so the Bobcats will have to kick it away. Kind of like a couple of heavyweights trying to feel each other out offensively as the Bobcats now forced to punt off their first possession. And you look at Kimball back there to receive it. Not only is he a great pass receiver, he's a heck of a kick returner also. Well, he stands at his 30-yard line. Of course, Travis Lule will handle the punting duties on fourth down. And a whistle now before the snap. Prior to the snap, delay game on the offense. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. So that'll back the Bobcats up five yards. And the bad news on this, this should give the Eagles really good field position. The Bobcats started that possession obviously with terrible field position and almost made something out of it, but you know, that five yarder makes a big difference. So Lule stands at his 11 yard line on fourth and six from the 23. High snap, pulled down, Lule bounces down at the 40. Kimball lets it go, sails out of bounds at the 35. And that's where Eastern has the football with 10-16 to go in Cheney. No score between the Eagles and the Bobcats. In Montana, we all know that winter comes fast. 
So this year, be prepared with a snow-busting Ford F-150 or Super Duty. Both have sure-footed 4x4 traction, plus F-150 has the most low-end torque, the most payload, and most towing power in its class, along with up to 5,000 total cash back. Ford Super Duty is equipped with the most powerful, longest-lasting diesel available, and it comes with 2,000 cash back. Ford F-Series, built for Montana, built Ford Tough. Everyone's falling for ABC Sunday at 9, 8 central. Even in a neighborhood full of surprises. Bree, will you marry me? Huh? No one. Did you leave the door open? Saw this one coming. I need an ambulance at Wasiri Lane. An all-new Desperate Housewives at 10, 9 central. How could you haunt my sleep? I'm a hot person. A first date. And a last chance. I miss you. An all-new Grey's Anatomy. It all starts Sunday, 9, 8 central only on ABC. You know, son, you need really special winter tires. Toyo Tires actually test and develop their tires for our winter. They are all-round winter tires working great on ice, snow, and other slippery surfaces. They cut into snow. They clear away moisture. Then crushed walnut shells act like tiny steel spikes digging into the surface. Can you feel that grip, son? The ultimate grip in all winter conditions. Toyo Tires, driven to perform. Back in Cheney, Eastern Washington with the football in a scoreless game after the 42-yard punt by Travis Lule and a first down from the 35. Both of them have had the football a couple of minutes uh, each. Meyer throws out there to the flat. That's complete to Kimball. Taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one on the play. Kyle Hunter, the corner from Montana State, making it, uh, playing some great defense out there with the stop. Looks like somebody needs the snow tires today because, again, you saw Kimball fighting for traction on that one also. Well, you know, uh, Dean, we were talking about the stadium before the game. This They have really done a, a terrific job with this facility, um, bringing it back up to standard. They've done a lot of improvements, new press box, and uh, new stands in the end zone and on the far side where the Montana State fans are this afternoon. And this has uh, turned out to be one of the nicer facilities. Yeah, very nice setup here. Second and nine from the 36. They'll keep it on the ground this time and nothing doing there as the Bobcat defense comes up with the big play keyed by Siatonga who makes the initial hit. King and, King and Maruta sliding over there again and uh, they're going to be busy this afternoon, but uh, a good job of stringing that play out there, letting uh, King and Marutas get in there and make the stop. But again, you're making uh, Eastern look at a third and long. Morris with the short carry. Give him one on the play, third and eight from the 37. Passing situation for Meyer as he drops back. Good protection, now runs straight up the middle, breaks a tackle up over the 45. First down yardage over midfield. And a nice job by Eric Meyer taking it into Montana State territory. Clive Lowe with the stop, but not before he picks up the first down. Well, he couldn't throw it, but they didn't contain him. And again, you want Eric Meyer to be running because that means that he's not thrown to anybody, but you don't want him to be running as if he's Travis Lule, which he's had two good runs already here in the first quarter. He's easily not only their leading rusher, the leading run on the field with about three for 34. So the gain down to the 47 and a first down. In this opening quarter, Meyer rolls to his left. Now looks down, gets pressure, and he's going to be dumped. What a great job by Epi King, the linebacker, who comes in for the sack. We saw that a couple of times last week by King, fastest guy for the Bobcats. And... Uh, He's uh, really hauling taters when he comes in there, and there's no <laughs> way that uh, Myers is going to outrun him. As he just kind of circled through. You see him coming through yep. the gap, and he that's one of those oh shucks uh, for Myers. He just protected himself. Eastern Washington coming off a tough loss last week, Dean, to Cal Poly that really sets up the importance of this game. In that game, Meyer 26 of 38 for 428 yards. But the big story there was the running of James Noble, the outstanding running back for the Mustangs, who gained 228 yards. Still scoreless in Cheney between Eastern Washington and the Bobcats.
Scoreless ball game so far between the Eagles and the Bobcats. Eric Meyer, quarterback for Eastern Washington so far, really kind of getting it done with his legs as well as throwing the football, Dean. Yeah, that's one thing the uh, Bobcats can't have happen. He cannot be Travis Lule. Four carries, 27 yards. The rest of the team, three carries, four yards. So second and 17, the draw play as they go to number 32 for Eastern. Back there running the football is Kimball. Kimball came in from the flanker spot and lined up at the eye back in the eye formation there at the tailback and thought they'd uh, cross the Bobcats up a little bit. He was looking for a hole, and then the Bobcats helped him dig one. They kind of use him any way they can, whether it's a... Uh, uh, He's a threat. <laughs> I mean. Had him lined up at a tailback that time. So just a gain of one, so third and 16 from the 47. Eagles have had excellent field position in this opening quarter, but no points to show. Meyer follow, checking the play at the line of scrimmage now drops back to pass. Gets pressure and gets taken down inside the 35. And Daly with a great job for the Bobcat defense comes crashing in to get the sack. Well, you had Daly and uh, also Marutis is coming in just in case to make sure. But uh, Meyer, you see him taking a look, and now he's out of time. And here comes the pressure. And Bobby Daly out of Helena. And Marutis out of Bozeman throw him down. And now the Bobcats should get their second possession with their best field position, obviously, and unless he can get it down to the four-yard line again. Dockers back to kick at the 20-yard line. Corey Austin stands at his 30. Good high kick. Austin will field it at the 25. Has some room up over the 30 to the 35. Up over the 40. Flag comes down at the 43. As Austin with a nice return brought down by Sean Powell. What a flag on the play. Kicking into the wind, holding it up just a little bit in time to get underneath it. And uh, a great job of reading it. Block in the back by the Bobcats, so their field position won't be nearly as good as it was, but for their second possession, it'll be a lot better than the first time they had it. And the gate's a great return by Corey Austin. Here's the call. Run back, illegal block in the back, above the waist, on the receiving team, number 37, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, timeout. 6 16 to go, first quarter, still scoreless in Cheney. Spring, summer, winter, and fall. Four Seasons does it all. Professional in parking lot and landscape maintenance. Integrity, dependability, knowledge, service. Asphalt rejuvenation to sprinkler irrigation. Tree and turf care to snow and ice liability management. Progressive, protective, curative, creative. We protect your investments. Hardscape, softscape, landscape. You can escape when you call Four Seasons. Total property maintenance. Serving all Montana and Idaho markets. One call does it all. 1-866-606-2467. Hi, I'm Eric Kinnaman. And I'm Joe Baker. You know, a few years ago, Eric and I were teammates here at Montana State University. As members of CAP football, we live the values of honor, integrity, loyalty, and personal courage. As a team, Bobcat football breeds pride, tradition, and camaraderie. Today, Joe and I carry on these values as proud members of the Montana Army National Guard. The Montana Guard has a proud and stored history of serving our great state and nation. You too can be a member of this team. And every once in a while, we still get the chance to lay the head on someone. If it's in Montana, if it affects your community, if it's relevant to your everyday lives, you'll find it on the Montana News Network. The Montana News Network brings you total coverage of regional news, sports, and weather at 10 p.m. each weeknight, live from our studios in the heart of Montana. The Montana News Network is working for you, covering the stories that are informative, the stories that matter. The Montana News Network, working for you in the spirit of Montana. Bobcat Game Day is brought to you by Four Seasons Property Maintenance, your Montana Ford Stores, and by Toyo Tires. First down play for Montana State, incomplete pass, broken up by Brian Jarrett as the Bobcats have the ball for the second time here in this first quarter. And Dean, we talked about Mike Kramer uh, spending six seasons as the head coach at Eastern Washington. Had some success back in 97, leading that team to a 12-2 record, made it to the 1AA playoffs, and uh, went deep before finally losing. 
So he uh, certainly very familiar with this area. Very special place in his heart, I think, out here. And as I said earlier, he and Paul Wolf, uh, good friends, except for about 60 minutes every year. <laughs> Second down now as the Cats keep it on the ground. Groves with some good hard running up close to the first down at the 35-yard line. Brought down by Annaberg. The pass uh, should have been completed. Javon Miller had it right there. I mean, the ball was right there in his hands and should have held on. Lost it going out of bounds. was incomplete. But a job of protecting for Lule on that one. And then they go back to uh, Groves again. He's carried twice. He's averaged about 12 yards a carry. Tremaine Murray and Chaz Gwynn check out of the lineup on third and one from the 34. Groves hit behind the line of scrimmage, but good second effort and looks to have enough for the first down. That four-man front for Eastern at 250, 285, 265, and 240. But uh, some real youth in there because uh, Greg Peach was playing high school ball last year. But you find just a little crack and Groves as he did uh, last week when he got his hundred he finds the crack and then he just ducks his head in preparation for the contact and keeps the legs going. Didn't need much and got all he needed. Made Bobcat fans real happy last week with a hundred yard effort on the ground something uh, we haven't seen from this football team and an added dimension for Travis Lule who now fires the football and in and out of the hands of Elliot Barnhart who had it at the 40 but turned up field before he gathered it in. That's another one should have been a completion. Mm -hmm. I mean that's that's unfortunate when you have the quarterbacks have to take the incompletion when you lay it right there between the numbers and uh, stuck it right to him. I think he wanted to run before he got it and just uh, lost it. 16 catches coming into today's game. So the incomplete pass brings up second and 10 from the 37. Three wide receivers to the left Groves in the backfield. And Lule will operate out of the gun. On the draw, they give to Groves. <laughs> Not much there. Hit right at the line of scrimmage and brought down for no gain. Niccolo with the stop right at the line of scrimmage. Eastern uh, showing the blitz early on. But uh, the, gap, the holes were plugged and Groves couldn't get through. A couple of scouts from the Canadian Football League here today from the Toronto Argonauts and also the British Columbia Lions. And no doubt from anybody you talk to that uh, Lule, if he doesn't get an NFL shot, uh, certainly uh, would uh, fit the uh, criteria for a quarterback in the CFL. Third and nine from the 38. Big play coming up here for both teams. In a scoreless first quarter. Lule now the uh, whistle before the play. And looks like this will go against Montana State. I believe that's yeah. another delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still Two delays a game for the Bobcats. Two other scouts here, one from the Bengals uh, of the uh, NFL and also one from the Atlanta Falcons. So you got four guys here. And of course, there's uh, other players down there they're looking at other than Lule and Meyer. We talk about Kimball, we talk about Jeff Bolton uh, for the Bobcats. Third and 14 now back to the 33. For Montana State, Lule looks downfield. Now fires across the middle, intended for Gatewood. Incomplete pass down around the 20 yard line and Montana State is forced to punt. So both teams back and forth on offense, but neither able to muster a drive here for any scoring in this first quarter. Gatewood pulled up. Ball comes. He had to try and get it in gear again and get going. It was over his head. But uh, Lule trying to make something out of nothing there. Give credit to the offensive line for giving him some time, but Gatewood pulled up. Kimball back at his 25 as Lule will kick it away. First punt going 42 yards. Now Travis gets this one away, angling it toward the sideline, out of bounds. And Eastern Washington back to work on offense with 3.39 to go in the opening quarter in a scoreless game.
People expecting a high-scoring football game have been disappointed so far, Dean. It's been the defense of both the Eagles and Bobcats that have dominated this opening quarter. Yeah, we talk about surprises. This would be the biggest surprise thus far that neither ball club has uh, found the scoreboard yet. Here's Meyer out there to his tight end, complete at the 45. Nice job that time as Meyer rolls out and makes the catch to Calhoun for a first down. Let's go down below to Chris Bach. Calhoun. Well, guys, you mentioned that there hasn't been any score. And last season, the matchup between these two teams, there was 95 total points scored. And that game broke the Cats back. Eastern came back from 21 points down in the second half to beat the Cats and cripple them for the rest of the season. Coach Kramer says they have to play four good quarters in order for that not to happen once again. Thank you, Chris. First down carry, not much there. As Cole tries the middle of that line, but no gain on the play. Mullahan in on the stop. Also, Chris Coloni in there, but uh, again, both ball clubs would like to find a running game or at least to uh, find one that's halfway adequate on this because we know that both quarterbacks uh, can throw the football well. We know both ball clubs have some great receivers. Both would like to uh, surprise or soften up the other at the ground game, but not happening yet. Three receivers set. Meyer flips it out there in the flat complete. And a good gain as V Hill takes it up over midfield to the 48 yard line. And a flag. Austin in on, the, in on the stop. He knew he had him one on one. He was reading it all the way and got himself prepared. V Hill almost got away, but on a one on one, Austin pulled him down. Penalties against Eastern Washington. So they got a block of the back on that. You know, the other team, uh, Dean, that's in the mix right now for this Big Sky Conference Championship, these two teams, of course, in Montana, which is playing Sacramento State this afternoon on the road. As you take a look at head coach Paul Wolf, now in his sixth season with the Eagles, 39-27 and 27 overall as we get the official the call. Above the waist against Eastern Washington, number 83. The penalty is declined. Third down. Well, the other thing with Paul Wolf, he's only 38 years old. I mean, six years as the head guy here mm -hmm. at Eastern. Talk about a, a, a career headed in the right direction. Six for six in winning seasons. Same tenure as uh, Mike Kramer had here at Cheney before moving on. So, you know, it's funny how a great quarterback just makes your program so good. You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, you suddenly become a genius. Yeah. Third and six from the 49. Meyer looks out to his right, fires, has a man complete and a great catch. Good coverage. But McIntyre, able to get between himself and Kime Hunter, makes the catch and a first down for the Eagles to keep the drive alive. McIntyre right out of Spokane, the youngster who was highly recruited as a basketball player but walked on here as a football player, and he's a pretty doggone good receiver for him. But again, Meyer had enough time, and he only had a slice of daylight, but that's all he needs with that rocket arm. 96 mile an hour fastball as a baseball pitcher drafted by the majors a couple of times but football is his love first down from the 39 on the completion and this time Meyer again looks can't find anyone all kinds of running room inside the 30 close to the 25 yard line and now a late flag coming in back at the 40. That'll be holding. So that helped him get loose. But the Eagles got caught in that one. But again, Meyer, uh, surprisingly enough, doing a good job of scrambling uh, in the early going here against the Bobcats. You talk about uh, his ability to be a two-sport standout. And I, now, when you're talking 96-mile-an-hour fastball as a pitcher, you can go. You can go a long way in, uh, in in pro baseball when you got that kind of an arm. Well, I think we may have had some sumo wrestling there on the interior <laughs> line here. <laughs> well, just a minute here. Holding on the offense, number 86. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. It's on Sean Powell. So think, it'll be first down. I and think take a look it was a... Uh, a big league slow dance there. Mm -hmm. There you go. I'll just take you down and, and then I'll just uh, lie on top of you. <laughs> oh, the official didn't have a tough time finding that one. One thirty eight to go in this opening quarter. So back to the forty nine yard line and it's first and twenty. Wait, 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 wait. 
Meyer now changing the play at the line. Bobcats have been doing a pretty good job of applying the pressure, obviously. Has time, fires across, looked like uh, arm was hit right as he released the football, so incomplete pass will bring up second down. That uh, looked more like Tim Wakefield than Nolan Ryan on that one. You know, but the uh, both teams offensively, Dean, victimized by penalties, but also some drop footballs. Uh, for Montana State on their first couple of possessions and now penalties here for the Eagles. and Neither team really getting into the flow of the game yet offensively. Well, I think both uh, both squads are gunned up on both sides of the ball, and they'll go through a few possessions before you start to see the real team for either side get it into cruise control. Second and 20 from the 49. This time Cole's going to get the ball, tries to get to the corner, and gets it up to the 45 for a short gain. So... It's going to bring up third and 15. Mac Mullahan strings the play out and runs him out of bounds after the five-yard game. Bobby Daly got in there and made him alter his route and pushed him a little bit wider and further outside than he wanted. Daly pushed him out, and then Mullahan comes in uh, to knock him off and over. And you got Eastern again and another third and long. One thing we've seen, especially with Montana State getting healthy on the defensive side of the ball, Dean, is just how quick the linebacking core is and how fast they, how quick they can get to a ball carry. And really, it's tough to run wide on Montana State right now. So third and 16 from the 45. Give them four on the play and another big third down call here. Two for four thus far for Eastern on third down situations here in the first quarter. Meyer straight back to pass, now looks downfield, pulls the ball down. He's not going anywhere. Brought down by big number 99, Aaron Papage for Montana State. Brings up another punting situation. He was sneaking in from the bottom underneath. Meyer looking on top, but uh, Papage, a youngster out of Great Falls, gets him. And again, give the secondary credit for coverage because Meyer starting to dance around. He saw Marutis in front of him, but he didn't see Papage sneaking in there from the side. So another kicking situation as Eastern Washington will kick it away. Force back inside the 15. And that's where he'll field it. Close to the 20, taken down right at the 20. And that's where the Bobcats will have the football. Well, not a... Probably uh, you're going to hear a lot of, from Epi King here today. And if you look at this uh, with the play of the quarter from the Billings Hotel, Chris, this is something we saw last week, and King did it again today. He finds the crack, and he is so fast, he shoots the gap. And uh, Eric Meyer saw him, but nothing you can do. Defense has been the story in this opening quarter. So first down from the 20. And they shift into the empty backfield for Lule as Groves will go split wide to his right. Lule still looking, rolls left, now fires, has a man, Tremaine Murray, who is rocked at the 28-yard line, but hangs on to the football. Yeah, rocked is putting it politely. <laughs> well, he was rocked, he was shocked, and he was dropped. I mean, he's getting up right now, wondering if that's his cell phone or his head that's ringing. <laughs> As he got the ball, but he got a lot more than that. And somebody shut the door right in his face. Wham. Hello. Well, he missed most of last week's game after leaving it, uh, the Sac State game after the opening possession back in this week. And now they're going to call the, the uh, call that an incomplete pass. So second and 10 from the 20. Well, he has three 100-yard games, and he was questionable for today coming in. This time they'll stay on the ground. Rolls with a little bit of running room up over the 25. Good gain to the 27. And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. Evan Groves, a good job running the football. Yeah, doing a great job for the Bobcats. Again, all he needs is a slice, and he reads it so well. Great balance plus yardage. Quarter number one in the books. No score in Cheney. Eastern Washington and the Montana State Bobcats.
Dean, you look at the offensive numbers for both football teams after quarter number one, and it looks like something you might see in one drive, let alone an entire 15 minutes. Yeah, this is this is true. And uh, Chris Peerboom, I guess, keeping the legs warm just in case he would have to go in. He's a backup quarterback. But so far, he's pedaled as far as Puyallo. <laughs> Second or third and two, rather, from the 28. Lule back to pass, looks downfield, and this is completed the 45 to Gatewood. Gatewood all alone at midfield and then takes it down to the 46-yard line in a big first down for MSU. Believe me, Eastern is aware of Ricky Gatewood as the Bobcats are of Eric Kimball, that he was wide open and, again, give the line credit, Lule had more than enough time to find him, but there is nobody out there with him, and he knows what to do when he gets it. Gatewood 53 catches for 653 yards coming into this game and five touchdowns, but a big play there to the 46 and a first down. This time Groves takes the deep pitch inside the 45 to the 44. That's still only a couple of completions, though, for uh, Travis Lule with that one. Quick in on the stop. Top tackler on this Eagle defense coming into this afternoon's game. Gain a two on the play, second and eight from the 44. Yeah, Joey Quick out of Mead High School in Spokane has had a marvelous career here. Of course, his, uh, his brother was a tight end here, too, just ahead of him at Eastern. So the Quick family has contributed uh, to the personnel of uh, Eastern Washington. Lule just two of seven on the afternoon. Now looks downfield, brings it down. Now has a man open at the 35. And Miller with the catch. They're going to mark it at the 34, and that's going to be another first down. Again, Lule getting plenty of time. He has not had to really run for it as Meyer has. And that offensive line uh, giving him plenty of time. But again, as we said before, that uh, you get the running game going, and Groves has given him one, as he did last week. That makes him be aware of that, and that helps open up your passing game. Tadeek Ford in on the stop, so first down from the 34. Deepest penetration of the day so far for Montana State. They'll stay on the ground again. Groves, good hard running inside the 30 to the 28. So a gain of six on the play, and Groves again, Dean, bumping up on another 100-yard game. Yeah, you don't, uh, free safety, uh, Brian Jarrett uh, came up to make the stop, but again, you don't need 10 or 15 yards. That'd be great, but uh, you need some plus yardage, five, six yards, and uh, Groves has been getting that. Each time he's carried the ball, he's averaging a little over six yards a carry right now. Second and three from the 27. Grove stays in the backfield. Three receivers set to the left. Groves tries the right side, and that time brought down. And a loss of one on the play. It's going to make it third and four. Eastern strung it out a little bit. Uh, there was no hole there. He could have cut back inside, but too many red jerseys there as he was... Uh, Bound and determined to get out there, and they just kept pushing him outside. And quick again on the stop, so no gain on the play. Third and three. Not in field goal range yet. As you're working into a headwind. Lule up under center now, changing the play. Back to pass, looks left now, pulls it down, has some running room. Lule gets the first down to the 20-yard line. Boy, Travis Lule knew right where the sticks were and got enough for the first down as Young in on the stop. Put some good heads up running by Lule. He noticed that he had that, and he thought he'd take one more look as he surveyed what was out there, and then he thought, okay, now I will take that because he had enough for the first down. He knew he could get there. Very heady play. He's always under control, one of his real strengths. Only one of seven with 10,000 passing and 1,000 rushing yards in college football history. You're talking about elite company right yeah. there for old number 14. First and 10 from the 20. Groves with the ball straight up the middle. Gain of five. And Evan Groves continues to run the ball well as Jarrett in on the stop for the Eagles. As we're inside 12 minutes to go in the second quarter. Well, you can't look at any statistics, Dean, in the Big Sky Conference and now nationally in the top 15 or 20 without seeing Travis Lule's name. Well, every week he moves up in some category mm -hmm. or another. I mean, the MSU career records are, are fabulous, career passing yards and attempts and so on. But 
Uh, you look at it uh, last week with the Evan Groves getting over 100 yards, the first Bobcat to get over 100 this year. And the way he's going, he's headed for another 100 yard uh, rushing game this afternoon. And they stay on the ground to Groves, who's hit at the line of scrimmage, but pulls his way down to the 17 yard line. Short gain on the play, third and two. And one thing we talked about with Groves that uh, he's uh, powerfully built. I mean, he's not some 6'2", 220 pound back, but you look at the legs and he never stops running and he has the powerful legs. So he's about 185, 190. Another third down call for Montana State, third and two from the 12. And now you are in field goal range. So the Bobcats should get something out of this drive. Lule out of the gun. Looks across the middle. Now rolls right. Still looking. Brings the ball down to the 15. Makes the move at the 10. Down to the 7 yard line. And that is going to be a first down for the Cats. Well, they were playing him to go out of bounds. <laughs> they thought he was going to run out of bounds like the majority of quarterbacks would do. And he said, I've got some room here. Let me come back in here and take a look at it. But he had time, and you think, uh-oh, he's going to take him out of field goal position. So they're running him, and they figure, well, he'll go out of bounds. Whoops, I don't think I will. Comes right back in, switches the ball to the other arm, away from the pressure. And, and comes I'm, right back in, right there, puts the brakes on. Whoops, I'll come back this way, and there's the first down. I'm not sure he has the first down, Dean, if he goes out right there. But he cuts back inside, and it's now first and goal from the seventh. Groves. Hit right at the line of scrimmage, falls forward, maybe gets two on the play. Ball's going to be marked right at the five-yard line as Ford in on the stop for the Eagles. Not much there, but just as you said, a couple of yards. Well, you're down there in that territory. We're two yards at a time. You got four tries, and that's all you need, two yards at a time. Well, we talked about in the it, it, at the beginning, Dean, you and I were talking before we went on that when you're a road team, it's always important to score first, to try to get some momentum going on your side. It's tough to win in the Big Sky Conference on the road. And right now, the Bobcats are knocking on the door with a second and goal from the six. Lule with the pitch to Groves. Tries to get outside and does. Inside, touchdown, Montana State. Evan Groves from six yards out. In for the score. And the Cats strike first. So quick off the ball. When he downs out, that whole far side, which is all Bobcat fans, all those bleachers over there, and that's easily the biggest uh, road gang we've seen for the Bobcats, other than the Grizzly game over there, and they're loving it. Hastings in to attempt the extra point after the six-yard touchdown run by Evan Groves. Lule will hold. Ball down, kick on the way, and good. 9-11 to go, second quarter. Montana State strikes first. They're on top by a touchdown. Why have some of Montana's largest businesses switched to Transaria? Maybe because they are Montana-owned. Or because Transaria provides service and products second to none. Mostly because Transaria can provide it all. Private networks, internet, and now VOIP. VOIP allows businesses to turn the internet into a valuable communication tool. The telephone, long distance or local, and clearest traditional service. Save up to 30% on your phone bill. Get rid of multiple bills and get VOIP from Transaria. The simple solution is Transaria. Call today. At Northwestern Energy, we work hard to educate about the dangers of natural gas. I've seen this happen before. You smell a strong natural gas odor, ignore it, and then flip a switch, light a candle, or use the phone. Never ignore the warning signs. If you smell natural gas, leave the area immediately, then call us. Remember, if the odor is strong, don't stay long. Northwestern Energy, dedicated to serving you. Let's go! You know, son, you need really special winter tires. Toyo Tires actually test and develop their tires for our winter. They're all-round winter tires working great on ice, snow, and other slippery surfaces. They cut into snow. They clear away moisture. Then crushed walnut shells act like tiny steel spikes digging into the surface. Can you feel that grip, son? The ultimate grip in all winter conditions. Toyo Tires, driven to perform. 
Back in Cheney where Montana State strikes first. 13 plays, 80 yards, over seven minutes off the clock, all capped off by the six-yard touchdown run by Groves to give MSU the lead. This one's gonna come down at the 20 and out of bounds. That'll bring the flag. Got it up into the yep. wind. And the wind held it up. And so decent field position for Eastern, but uh, also the Bobcats ate up the clock on that drive. They've mm -hmm. now had the ball a little over 11 minutes and uh, Eastern a little under 10 up until that. Eastern uh, was almost two to one in time of possession. Now Evan Groves picking up right where he left off last week. And now Eastern Washington. Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Decision by the Eastern Washington team is to take the ball on the 35. First down. Eagles take the football from the 35, and here it is again, Dean. Montana State getting it done on the ground. Well, if you look at uh, Groves again, he reads it so well. Two here, five here, but always the danger of the big one, and you saw that one, the uh, offensive line pinching down, giving him enough room to the outside. Cole with the short gain on the play, and Nick Marutis. In on the stop for Montana State. And uh, boy, credit the Bobcat defense so far, Dean, as they have done an outstanding job pitching the shutout over the most explosive 1AA team in the country. We talked about Eastern coming in, averaging 508 yards of total offense per game. And so far, they have been held scoreless. Nick Marutis out of Bozeman, Montana. Now, that last play, Marutis literally was flying at the football. When you see bodies doing that flying around on defense, good things are going to happen. Coach is always talking about getting to the football and bodies flying around. Well, he was flying around on that one. Gain of two, second and eight. Here's Meyer now rolling to his left. Fires out on the flat, incomplete, and intended for Kimball at the 45, but not even close. Corey Austin back in coverage for Montana State. And Clive Lowe. Is running stride for stride with Meyer. And Meyer, even though he has the good arm, very difficult to come back with the right arm when you're rolling to your left. Coleman checks in for the Eagles on third and eight. And they've seen a lot of that this afternoon, third and long. And another one here. Well, one of the differences for them, as opposed to Bobcats right now, the Bobcats have come up with the running game. Thus far, Eastern hasn't. Meyer just five of nine on the afternoon. Here comes the blitz from the outside. Meyer steps up, has some running room, and a first down over midfield to the 45. Great job by Eric Meyer as he pulls the football down and then slides at the 45. Clive Lowe takes him to the turf, but a first down to the 43. You'll notice the pressure for the Bobcats came from the outside, and all Meyer had to do was take a step mm -hmm. forward as he had Papage and Lowe coming from uh, either side, and he stepped forward, and there was nobody home, and Marutis comes from behind, but Meyer was going down then to feel the pressure, but he gets the first down. And again, you want him running if you can, but you don't want him running for those big gainers that he's had a couple of here. Somebody needs to tell him he's not supposed to run the football. Well, it's supposed to be Travis Lula. No. First down call here, and Cole with the short gain. Brought down by Siatanga after a gain of one. So the biggest surprise is that it's a 7-0 ball game right now, halfway through the second quarter. Mm -hmm. We thought both clubs would have lit it up early and often. Not that that won't happen. Lights are on here, by the way. The 2 o'clock start time here in the Pacific Northwest. What a beautiful afternoon it was. We came over from Missoula this morning and ran into some snow on the pass, but uh, the sun's been out today, and it's, a, as you mentioned, a perfect day for football. Little breeze, second and nine from the 43. Kimball now goes back in the tailback position and takes the deep pitch. That's going to throw back to Meyer, and Meyer gets a block at the 40 to the 35. And what a great job on the double pass there. And the block that really sprung it was Chris Perkins who cracked back and sprung Meyer for a first down. Watch Kimball slow down. You can tell he's going to come back yep. and throw it. The Bobcats caught on a little bit, but guess what? Too late, good block, first down. Well, pull on all the stops yeah. here this afternoon. There is no next week in the big sky for Eastern Washington. This is it, the last conference game of the year. They already have two losses. Sometimes you got to reach into the bag of fun. First and 10 from the 33, Meyer quick drop. Now the screen complete to V Hill inside the 25 to the 20. And that should be another first down. Marutis in on the stop. Good quick play there to pick up 10. And 
Boy, the Eastern wasting no time in answering the touchdown. There's Veal's numbers on the season, 54 for 863 yards, second only to Kimball in receptions this year. Well, that's the whole thing. Everybody talks about Kimball, Kimball, Kimball. Well, the mm -hmm. Bobcats very aware of him, but uh, this guy quietly going about his business with over 50 catches. Yeah, and McIntyre, another one of those guys, big, tall, wide receiver you got to keep an eye on. Down to the 637 mark of the second quarter. They're going to measure to see if he picked up enough for the first down. From up here, it looks like he has just enough. Well, here's one of the dangers, too, that you may be uh, witnessing a little bit of, and that is Meyer starting to find his rhythm. Yep, and that is a first down. And I think you're right, Dean. I mean, we, we talked about it being a low-scoring game, but with these two quarterbacks, it can change so quickly. You get a guy into a rhythm, and all of a sudden he starts making plays, and pretty soon... You start lighting up the scoreboard. You can see by uh, Myers' uniform that he spent a lot more mm -hmm. time on the ground than they would like him to. But he has him down just outside the 20-yard line, and he has a tailwind. Ball is on the 22. It is a first down. And this time Myers, play action, rolls to his right, throws it out there, incomplete. What a great job in coverage. Kaim Hunter. Absolutely no chance to complete that pass. He had Kimball all the way, and he was about to make a stab to try and get in front of that ball. Had been a little closer to him to get in front and take a shot at the interception. But again, good pressure on uh, Meyer. Again, rolling away. He's a good-sized quarterback. Both these guys, uh, good-sized quarterbacks. Both uh, Lule uh, for the Bobcats. And Meyer, strong guys. And there you see Meyer leads the nation in total offense, 506 yards a game. Second and 10. This time they'll stay on the ground. Good hard running. He slams up inside the 20. That's Dale Morris with the call, and Clive Lowe in on the stop. Marutis there at the bottom again. I mean, Marutis is busy. He's mm -hmm. going to be busy all afternoon. You're going to be hearing about him all afternoon. Morris out of Eugene, Oregon, just a sophomore. Third and five, so a key third down play for the Eagles on this current drive as we're inside six minutes in the opening half. Bobcats lead it by a touchdown. Meyer with the straight drop, throws up for the end zone and incomplete flag is down, intended for McIntyre. Hunter was late in turning around. He turned around, but uh, he was a little bit late in turning around, but he saved the touchdown. But the official flagged him right there. He did turn around. I think you're right, Dean. He was playing the man, and uh, as Meyer threw the football, Hunter never did turn. And it looks like this will be pass interference against the Bobcats. Pass interference on the defense, number 17. By rule, the ball is placed at the two, the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Well, yeah, Mike Hunter, or Mike uh, Hunter, Mike Kramer kind of uh, non committal on that. He just lost it up there, and you watch, he turned around. Mm -hmm. And there's the pass interference. Yeah, close play. So, first and goal from the two. I think they got him more for the contact and thought he might have been pushing a little bit. Uh, And Cole's going to get the football, and he is in for the touchdown. So Bobby Cole goes in from two yards out, and the Eagles are on the scoreboard with 5.26 to go in the second quarter on the touchdown. Nothing fancy on that. You only had two yards, so you bust him out a little bit and punch him up inside. Good job up front by the offensive line of the Eagles. Cole in for the touchdown. And Weddle will be in for the extra point. Ball down, kick on the way, and it's good. 5.26 to go in the second quarter, and we're tied at 7.
Eastern Washington has tied this football game, a nine-play, 65-yard drive. And Cole going in from two yards out to tie the football game at seven. Bergstrom now set to kick it away for the Eagles. This one coming down right at the goal line. Miller up over the 20 to the 30. Flagged down, and he's taken down at the 35. Javon Miller with the good return, but a flag back on the 15. And have a block in the back, I believe, by the Bobcats. And that's what the call is going to be. Yep. So the Cats will start deep in their own end. And Dean, a, a nice answer back drive by the the Eagles to tie this football game. Right. Well, everybody knows that uh, Meyer can throw the football, but what the successful part of their game has been this afternoon in the early going has been that he has been able to scramble and run for it. And then uh, instead of throwing for the touchdown, they run for it. So again, the ground game making the difference for them as the ground game and the Bobcats drive for the score uh, made a difference for them. Only difference being we expect Evan Groves to be a running back. We don't expect <laughs> Eric Meyer to be a running back. And there's Cole, the man that took it in for the touchdown. He's fast approaching the 1,000-yard mark. Came into today's game with over 800 yards. And the two-yard touchdown run, the most important two so far of this season as it ties the game at seven. So the Cats have it deep in their own end, first and 10 from the eight. And Lule, quarterback draw, not much there. Dances around, gets up over the 10 to the 13-yard line, so Travis making something out of nothing. That was obviously called all the way on that. Mm -hmm. He just didn't have any gap up the middle. But given his field vision, found a little hole outside. And Jared in on the stop. Well, we talked about the renovation to Woodward Field in the stadium. And, you know, Eastern Washington, Dean, played their home games in some different areas. They played in Spokane, and it's nice that they're able to play all of their games now right on campus. Yeah, I used to play in uh, Joe Albee. Mm -hmm. Washington State played a few there, too, but uh, they want to get back on campus, and they have an on-campus home. And as you said earlier, this is a really nice facility now as we've added about three stories here of an all-new private box and press box here for Eastern. Our first trip out here for this one is about two years old now. Second and five from the 13. Lule looks long and deep, and this one thrown. Well, it's intercepted, intended for Gwynn, but that's going to be incomplete as Trufant catches it out of bounds. <laughs> Players kind of pointing to where, where his feet came down and saying he was in, but nothing doing there. Incomplete pass. Trufant's brother, of course, a DB in the NFL out of Washington State, who the Bobcats saw when they played Washington State when his uh, brother was a DB there. The Trufant brothers. A lot of football out here in the Pacific Northwest with Washington State just down the block. And Eastern Washington playing Aaron Cheney. Third and five from the 13. Big play now for both teams. Eagles wanting to get the football back before the half. Lule looks downfield. Now throws. Intended for Gwynn at the 25. Incomplete. Lule takes a seat at the two-yard line, and this is going to bring up fourth down in a kicking situation. Yeah, he had uh, really no time. George Lane, the nose guard. J.C. transfer out of uh, Houston. Came right up the middle, and uh, he aimed it in the direction of the receiver, but nobody home. And now he has to punt into a win. Kimball stands at his 45. And Lule kicks from his end zone. And this one sailing over the head of Campbell. He misplayed it. So a break for the Bobcats as they down it at the 37. 4.09 to go. Opening half. We're tied at 7. Rest assured in Montana, winter comes fast. So be prepared with an all-wheel drive Ford 500 or Freestyle. These fuel-efficient vehicles have a five-star safety rating and are specially equipped with your family's wintertime driving in mind. With an intelligent, electronically controlled all-wheel drive system for improved steering and handling on Montana's snow-packed roads. And now lease a Ford 500 or Freestyle competitively priced at just $299 a month. The all-wheel drive Freestyle and 500. Built for Montana. Built for the road ahead. 
this is it. A new season, a new look, a time to build on the past and create a new future. A time to take all the work, dreams, and promise and bring it to the field. Can Travis Lule orchestrate his offense to the team's third victory in four years over the Grizz? Can the revamped defense return to prominence in the Big Sky Conference? Can Mike Kramer hang another conference championship banner in the field house? Join me, Chris Bach, every week as we track the Bobcats and find answers to these questions on an all-new show, Bobcat Football with Mike Kramer. The WB Tuesday is all fresh. Rory. It's the moment they thought would never come. I love you, Mom. Oh. But you have no idea. Fresh Gilmore Girls. Then the journey leads two brothers home. I swore to myself that I would never go back there. Backward tragedy struck their family. I know I've left you messages before. I need your help, Dad. Fresh Supernatural after Gilmore Girls. Bobcat Game Day, brought to you by Transaria, Northwestern Energy, dedicated to serving you, and by the Billings Hotel and Convention Center. Kimball with the football inside the 15. A big play from Meyer to Kimball. Taken out of bounds by Ryan Force. But not before he gets down to the 11-yard line. A huge play for the Eagles offensively late here in the second quarter. Well, that's a combination that the Bobcats and everybody in the Big Sky are knowledgeable. They're aware of it. But guess what? He makes the catch, and then... It's the yards after the catch, and then it's just a foot race, and he almost takes it all the way to the house. But he got away after the catch, said one step, adjusted himself, and took off. Four saves the touchdown, first and 10 from the 11. Meyer rolls out to his right. Now throws it up for grabs and throws it away. Good pressure by Montana State defensively that time as Marutis comes in and forces the incomplete pass. Let's go down below to Chris Bach. Well, originally I was going to talk about Montana State's defense and how well they were performing, only allowing the quarterback Eric Meyer to throw for 60 yards, but 50 yards on that play, so now he's over 100. And for a team that averages 300 yard, 370 yards in the air, they're doing a good job. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Chris. Second and 10 from the 11 after the incompletion. Cole this time gets the ball. Hit right at the line of scrimmage. Couple on the play. Going to bring up third down as King again on the stop for Montana State. Rolling in underneath. Basically tripped him up and literally did trip him up on that one. Now this is a big series, Dean, I think for both teams. Uh, obviously Eastern Washington would like to pound one in here before the half with some big momentum going into the third quarter. And Montana State right now thinking maybe a field goal and we have uh, pick up a moral victory. Yeah, Cole had over 800 yards rushing coming in. It had been hard to come by, averaging less than two yards a carry here through the first half. Third and goal from the seven. Meyer feels the pressure, now steps up, has some room, takes it down close to the goal line, and they're going to mark it just short, but that's going to be a first down. Again, almost but not quite. Couldn't get him coming right up the middle. And Meyer again escaped. He's had a good first half running oh, yeah. the football. Bobby Daly had a shot at him. Couldn't pull him down. Mollahan misses. And he gets it almost into the end zone. But now you're looking at a first and goal. And the Bobcats will send in the beef up front. But Meyer, easily their uh, top ground gainer with eight carries for 39 yards. It would be a surprise that he would have carried eight times and a bigger surprise that he would have 39 yards. And Cole again gets the call, hit at the line of scrimmage, and he will not get there. Ryan Cole met right at the line of scrimmage by Papage. That's going to be a loss on the play, second down. When you talk about a D-line standing up the runner, uh, indeed that time they did stand up the runner. He had no place to go, and they uh, straightened him up. He wants to give by Meyer, and he goes in there, and he doesn't get any chance to even to lower the headgear and try and go forward. They stood him right up, and I think he lost one. Yeah, loss of one on the play, so second and goal from the one.
And Meyer again, this time to Cole. Cole tries again and is going to be stopped short of the goal line. Another good play by the Bobcat defense. Ryan Force gets up there to plug the hole. And it's going to be third and goal from the one. I think they're going to try and throw. Now they get a couple of receivers. Send Kimball back in there and also Craig McIntyre. They were just trying to push their way into the uh, end zone. Inside two minutes to go, second quarter. Third and goal for the Eagles. Kimball splits wide right. McIntyre comes to the left. This time they go to the fullback, slanted for the touchdown. So from a yard out, the Eagles take the lead for the first time this afternoon on the one-yard touchdown plunge by the fullback, Lars Slynn, and it's 13-7. Slynn, the stocky 5'11", 215, was a linebacker, and he knew all he had to do was cover up the ball, put his head down, and see if he could force his way in, and he did. Tried to spread the Bobcats a little bit by having Kimball and McIntyre split out wide and gave him just a little slice. And well, they used to use him as the lead blocker the entire first half, but that time they go to the big guy and he gets in for the touchdown. Extra point on its way, plenty of leg, up and good. 137 to go in the second quarter, and for the first time today, Eastern Washington leads as they've opened up a 14-7 lead. Now for the Bobcats, Dean, you got uh, 137 to go, a couple of timeouts left, you're down by a touchdown. I think if you're Travis Lule and the Bobcat offense, you try to make something happen. Yeah, it would be great to get a score, but also remember the Bobcats will have the football to open the third quarter. Right. But that's back-to-back uh, -back scores by the Eagles. But again, you see just enough, and that's all it took. Flynn, the old linebacker, just lowered his head. Next linebacker's dream to carry the football. <laughs> and there's the Eastern Washington scoring drive. Seven plays, 62 yards. The one-yard touchdown run for the Eagles as they take the lead. Javon Miller back to receive. You see it's a little chilly. Uh, sun is down, so temperature starting to plummet a little bit here in the Pacific Northwest. You need that uh, Bobcat hat and a striped blanket. That's right. Well, you mentioned the, the contingent of Bobcat fans that are here and across the field. The entire visitor side is full of the Montana State faithful, but right now, Seeing their team trail by a touchdown. High kick coming down to Miller. He's going to take it inside the five. Up over the 15. Has some running room to the 25. And Miller gets to the 27-yard line. McCumber in on the stop. And a first down with 1.32 to go in the opening half. That's a nice job by Miller. Yep. Just took it, put the head down, and turned on the Jets. And tried to break, break that first wave. But he gets some pretty decent field position. And a minute 32 is more than enough time for... Uh, Lula and company to operate. Well, you talk about maybe wanting to try to get something, Dean, but also what you don't want to have happen is a turnover with under two minutes to go. So you need to be careful, protect the football. Lula just three of 10 today for 43 yards. First down from the 27. Quick drop, fires out on the flat, complete to Gwynn. Gwynn up over the 30 to the 32. Gain of five on the play makes it second and five. But didn't get out of bounds. Good safe call that time as they Run the quick out to Chaz Gwynn coming in it today. 36 catches for 442 yards. Hendrick rides him down after the five yard gain. Chaz, one of those guys uh, easy to forget when you're concentrating on Rick Gatewood and Tremaine Murray, but Gwynn can make you pay. Second and six, gain of four. Little screen to Gatewood, picks up a block at the 35, up over the 40. First down for Montana State. That'll stop the clock while they move the chains and spot the ball, so that helps out a little bit. Saving those two timeouts. But again, this is where Lule works his magic. First down at the 40. Bobcats don't use a timeout. And again, quick drop, slant pattern complete. Gwynn makes the catch over midfield of the 45. And I'll tell you what, uh, when you run the slant pattern like that, you know you're going to get whacked. And Gwynn makes the catch. He got the ball. The ball came out. But I believe they ruled it a catch. But that, again, will stop the clock just long enough to move the chains. Now the Cats are in Eagles territory. Picking up big chunks of yardage here in a short period of time. 40 seconds to go, second quarter. Now Lule opts not to use a timeout, spikes the football, and that'll bring up second and 10. Montana State does have two timeouts remaining. 
Well, as you said before, on the on this drive, you'd like to at least get something. Even if you get a field goal, you'd like to get a score out of this because you're going to get the football to open the third quarter. Ball's at the 44-yard line. They're going to need at least another 20 yards or so to be in Hastings' range. Here's Lule, looks across, fires for Miller, and Miller just never saw it coming. Kind of a broken play. But Lule didn't have enough time, and of course, uh, for Eastern Washington, the play of the quarter has been Eric to Eric, the thing the Bobcats worry about. Eric Meyer to Kimball, mm -hmm. first miss, and then he will make the second miss, and then it's the foot race, and Forrest finally catches up with him down around the 15-yard line. And when you're that explosive, it only takes one play to turn a game around, and that, of course, leading to the short touchdown that gives Eastern Washington the lead player down for the Eagles. That's Danique Ford, and he's the one that came in to put the pressure on Lule and uh, make him unload a little bit quicker than he wanted to. And he's the one who is uh, down out there. 35 seconds to go, third and 10 coming up for the Bobcats, and two timeouts remaining. Yeah, plenty of time, and uh, still with those timeouts, Ford now back on his feet. And he'll come out of the ball game. Well, this is also where uh, you don't want to give the ball. This may be four down territory, but you don't want to give the ball back to Eastern Washington right there, too, in case you go for it on fourth down. Yeah, you give them the ball here at uh, the 45, and well, you're giving Meyer a chance to, to really put a dagger in you here in the second quarter. So third and 10 from the 44, three wide receivers set. Miller split to the left, and Groves in the backfield. Well, plus Easter knows you're going to throw it. They can come after you. Lule looks across the middle, fires, has a man that's complete. And right near the end and where the spot of the football is, that's going to be a first down. Well, and by virtue of the tackle and the old uh, whirling uh, for the shot put try, shot put him right to the first down on the spin move. Yeah, Miller uh, spun out of the tackle of Young and was able to get enough for the first down. Clock running, 25 seconds. Lule grounds the ball, so second down. Pretty good clock management on this drive as the Cats will try to get within field goal range for Hastings. The ball at the 33. But Lule just doesn't get rattled. As he looks, has enough time, but you watch on the tackle. Nice catch, and now whirl around, and here, I'll just throw you into first down sticks country. So second and 10 now from the 33. 25 seconds to go in the second quarter. Goulet looks downfield. Fires out to Murray all alone at the 25, close to the 25, taken out of bounds. And that'll keep the clock rolling. And now Montana State will use a timeout. Shamsadine on the play there. And on that play, Evan Groves helped buy some time for Lule. One of the raps on Groves, why he wasn't getting more reps, was the rap was that he didn't block well enough. Well, he blocked on that one, and that helped Lule have enough time. The Bobcats will burn one of their remaining two. What do they need here for Hastings with the win, Dean? I mean, you're at the 27-yard line, so what would you think, down maybe around the 20? To, to Yeah, if he could get another 8 to 10 yards, be well within his range, it'd be... You know, he wouldn't have to get that deep if it weren't for that win, but mm -hmm. it's kind of a funny win, too, which would be uh, kind of blowing from his right to his left. You've seen a couple of the punts and uh, kickoffs into that win. It's not that stiff a win, but it's enough to uh, change the trajectory of the football. You can ask the fans in that end zone if you notice where the, the crowd is scattered a little bit in the end zone. They're kind of sitting into the win. The Bobcat fans on the far side getting a pretty good uh, piece of it but you can see it's it's not that stiff a win but it's just enough to uh, alter the direction of the uh, kicks which we've seen early on on kickoffs and uh, punts and even a couple of the passes other games in the big sky today Idaho State's in northern Arizona Weber State's at Portland State and Montana as we said is down at Sac State to take on the Hornets as we're getting down to the wire of the big sky conference championship still very much up in the air between eastern Washington the Cats and the Grizz and Eastern Washington, a, a team right now that's uh, trying to do it by winning the conference title. Yeah, you talk about that old uh, must-win stuff. Well, yeah. this is a must-win for them. Bobcats will have another day if they lose, but Eastern, they lose, they're done. There's no mathematical way after that. 
Third and four from the 27. Big play for Montana State. 16 seconds to go in the second quarter. Groves goes in motion across the middle and intended for Gatewood. Incomplete pass brings up fourth down. Well, now the big decision time. That was uh, Nick Denbe. Got the hand, wrap it around in there. Now it's fourth down. What do you want to do? Yep, trot him in. I think they're going to, yep, try the field goal. Get something out of it. Well, that's a long one. 27. So the spot of the ball is going to be from the 34. This will be a 44-yard field goal for Hastings. Lule the holder. And this one's going to come from the left hash. Ball down, kick on the way, and not enough there. Wind holding that one up. So Hastings unable to connect on the long field goal attempt, and Eastern Washington takes the football with eight ticks to go in the second quarter. The aim was good, but he ran out of gunpowder. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you, you talked about the wind there, Dean, and coming from right to left, and that would have been a tough kick under ideal conditions, but... Uh, there you see his numbers, which have been good this year. 13 of 16 with a long of 42 yards. And now, of course, if you look at the flag, it's limp. Just after he kicked that, then the wind quit. And Meyer looks like they'll just take a knee and be content with taking the lead into the locker room. One half of football is in the books from Cheney, where Eastern Washington on that touchdown late in the second quarter leads by seven over Montana State. Good first half of football, Dean, and again, Dominated by the defense. Yeah, your stats are almost identical. Uh, time of possession in favor by about five minutes of uh, Eastern, but I think the difference for both ball clubs has been the ground game. The ground game for the Bobcats, Evan Groves, but the ground game, surprisingly enough, for Eastern Washington, uh, quarterback Eric Meyer. Let's go down below to Chris Bach. Guys, I'm, I'm joined by head coach Paul Wolf and coach in a game that had so many offensive expectations, does it surprise you to see the score the way it is? No, I, I, all week I knew it was going to be a lower game than, la uh, game than last year, and, and I knew both defenses were going to play well and be a little more conservative and, and, uh, and not give up easy points. Obviously, Eric Meyer comes in as a huge passing threat, but he's been a different threat on the ground. Uh, was that part of your offensive strategy? Uh, it is if it's there, you know, and, and, and so far it's kind of been there, so he's taking the shots, running when they were there. What do you guys need to do in the second half to ensure a victory? Well, you know, defensively, we've got to keep tackling and, and, and keeping things in front of us and, and uh, still mix some things up and, and, uh, and, and do that. And offensively, we've got to be able to, to block a little bit better. We're not blocking real well in our offensive line, so we need to get better. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, thanks. Thank you, Chris. 14-7 to 7 our score. And back with the halftime show. Stay with us. We're back in Cheney after this. Spring, summer, winter, and fall, four seasons does it all. Professional in parking lot and landscape maintenance. Integrity, dependability, knowledge, service. Asphalt rejuvenation to sprinkler irrigation, tree and turf care to snow and ice liability management. Progressive, protective, curative, creative. We protect your investments. Hardscape, softscape, landscape, you can escape when you call four seasons. Total property maintenance, serving all Montana and Idaho markets. One call does it all. 1-866-606-2467. Hey, Bobcat fans, the Billings Hotel and Convention Center has a package just for you. For just $68, you get one night stay with a room for four complimentary continental breakfast plus water slide passes and two passes for comedy night. When you call, just ask for the Bobcat special. The Billings Hotel and Convention Center, conveniently located off the King Avenue Interchange, has all the services you expect. Dine in comfort in the restaurant or take a dip in the pool when you take advantage of the Bobcat special at the Billings Hotel and Convention Center. If it's in Montana, if it affects your community, if it's relevant to your everyday lives, you'll find it on the Montana News Network. 
The Montana News Network brings you total coverage of regional news, sports, and weather at 10 p.m. each weeknight, live from our studios in the heart of Montana. The Montana News Network is working for you, covering the stories that are informative, the stories that matter. The Montana News Network, working for you in the spirit of Montana. Halftime in Cheney, where the Eagles from Eastern Washington lead over the Bobcats of Montana State. 14-7 is our score at halftime. Well, this game is known as the Governor's Cup, and Dean Alexander joins us and explains why. Dean? It is the Governor's Cup because, obviously, the governors of both states, Brian Schweitzer of Montana and the host governor, Christine Gregoire of uh, Washington, have a little bet going. Governor Gregoire, your bet is that you don't want to eat any buffalo or you don't want to give any away any salmon, or both, right? Uh, well, most importantly, I don't want to give away a salmon that I caught. My husband got sick, uh, I struggled mightily, I caught this thing, and I'm not about to give it away to Brian. So in your case, you're pretty confident, obviously, if this salmon means this much to you that you're not going to give it away. You got it. I wouldn't have put it up if I didn't think I was going to keep it. But I'm, I'm looking forward to Brian's buffalo steaks. All right, uh, Governor Schweitzer, how did this come about for you? How did you decide on the buffalo steaks? I thought they were called the doves or uh, the ducks or something like that. I find out they're the eagles. I don't know. They played like the eagles the first half, but we'll see what the second half looks like. So you got yourself involved in what we'd call a good surf and turf war. Absolutely. I, I think we're going to win this yet. Uh, I don't mind sending some good buffalo steaks out to Washington, but she's going to have to pay for them. I'm not going to give them more. Governor Greg Wire, you're in the lead right now, feeling confident? Oh, you know, I don't think you can feel confident at any point. I'm, I got my bet on the Eagles, but the Bobcats are a great team, great coach, uh, good quarterback, good team, defensive game. But, you know, it's a tough game. It's always a good rivalry, but I'm still going to bet at the end of the day. I'm keeping my salmon, and I'm getting some five uh, buffalo steaks. Well, what's your answer? I doubt it. Uh, the way I see it is the Bobcats are a second-half team. We got the greatest quarterback in America, and their defense is tired. Bobcats by uh, two touchdowns. Buffalo Steaks versus Salmon. You thought it was the Eagles and the Bobcats. Governor Chris Gregoire, thank you very much. Governor Brian Schweitzer, thank you. Back to Chris Byers. <laughs> Dean Alexander playing mediator between the two governors. We're at halftime, and Eastern Washington right now leads this game 14-7. to Stay with us. More halftime festivities from Cheney after this. You can't see it or smell it, but left undetected, carbon monoxide poisoning can cause flu-like symptoms, confusion, or even death. Keep your family safe. Have your furnace cleaned and checked every year. And if you suspect carbon monoxide poisoning, leave the area immediately. Call Northwestern Energy and get medical help. There is a seal problem. Northwestern Energy, dedicated to serving you. These days, filling up is getting more and more expensive. So do it less often in a Ford. For 2006, we have 25 models that get 25 miles per gallon or better. Like the fuel efficient Ford Freestyle with up to 27 miles per gallon. It's how Ford is helping you live a full life. Visit your Montana Ford store today. Hi, I'm Eric Kinnaman. And I'm Joe Baker. You know, a few years ago, Eric and I were teammates here at Montana State University. As members of CAP football, we live the values of honor, integrity, loyalty, and personal courage. As a team, Bobcat football breeds pride, tradition, and camaraderie. Today, Joe and I carry on these values as proud members of the Montana Army National Guard. The Montana Guard has a proud and stored history of serving our great state and nation. You too can be a member of this team. And every once in a while, we still get the chance to lay the head on someone. Max Media of Montana is taking Montana TV to the max. Max Media of Montana statewide television group offers you maximized viewing choices with more stations and top programming in each market. Our Montana News Network delivers comprehensive local news, weather, and sports from around our state. The Montana Sports Network puts you in the stadium with Montana State Bobcat football broadcasts. We are Montana. We are Max Media. The Northwestern Energy Halftime Report is brought to you by Northwestern Energy, 
dedicated to serving you. Halftime continues from Cheney. The Eagles lead it by a touchdown. Let's go down below and join That's Chris Bach. Best of luck for a great second Thanks, guys. I'm joined by offensive tackle Michael Ruse, Tennessee Titans offensive tackle, former Eastern Washington player. And Titans obviously with a bye this week. So what's it like to come back and see your old team play? It's fun to come watch. You know, I've never actually seen an Eastern game or an NFL game. So it's fun to come back and, you know, get the whole tailgate experience and just come watch a game. You're living the dream of so many college athletes. What has been the hardest transition from college to the pros for you? A couple, you know, hardest part is probably just the speed and the size of the players. And then aside from that, it's just the mental aspect from week to week, just preparing for the games and preparing for each opponent. You know, each week you're going against the best defensive end in the world. So it just, you know, it gets hard after a while just preparing for each, each game. Eastern sporting some new uniforms this year. You, uh, you have a little something to do with that. I did. I, uh, I offered to pay for the new uniforms, you know. I wanted to help them out as, as soon as I can, you know, obviously just I have a lot to owe to this university for getting where I am, so I wanted to help them out. Second half prediction. And now I think East is going to have the win. <laughs> All uh, right, thanks. Michael Ruse, offensive house. tackle for the Tennessee Titans, and that's been your Northwestern Energy break. We'll be back right after this. Courtesy of the Cheney Free Press. Fourteen seven, our score at halftime as Eastern Washington leads over the Bobcats of Montana State in a key Big Sky Conference matchup as we wind down towards the end of the season. As Dean mentioned, Eastern Washington very much needing a win to keep alive its postseason playoff hopes. They need to win the conference to do it. As we check the first half statistics, Dean, uh, not a ton of offense by either team. No, actually about half what you would expect, yep. but time of possession in favor of Eastern and what would be the difference the difference would be one play mm -hmm. one play the 51 yard pass completion and the other half of that would be the uh, rushing yardage for Eastern Washington mainly at the uh, uh, behind the running of quarterback Eric Meyer which is highly unusual but that's the difference the Bobcats can shut that off you may have something but the Bobcats allowed that one big one Eric Meyer to Eric Kimball the one you want to stay away from and and that's the difference in the score right there, one touchdown. And that was the one that set up the short touchdown, the go-ahead score by Eastern Washington, as they've now opened up a seven-point lead over Montana State at halftime. Take a look at some of the other numbers uh, in this first half. Penalties, to Montana State, five for 43. You mentioned time of possession. And uh, right now, where it counts the most, the Eagles on top on the scoreboard. So as we get down to the end of the season, Dean, final 
final uh, home game of the season next week. It's Cat Grizz in Bozeman. And all season long, the Montana State faithful have been following these Bobcats both home and away. And here's what we've seen this fall. At Northwestern Energy, we work hard to educate about the dangers of natural gas. I've seen this happen before. You smell a strong natural gas odor, ignore it, and then flip a switch, light a candle, or use the phone. Never ignore the warning signs. If you smell natural gas, leave the area immediately, then call us. Remember, if the odor is strong, don't stay long. Northwestern Energy, dedicated to serving you. Why have some of Montana's largest businesses switched to Transaria? Maybe because they are Montana-owned. Or because Transaria provides service and products second to none. Mostly because Transaria can provide it all. Private networks, internet, and now VOIP. VOIP allows businesses to turn the internet into a valuable communication tool. The telephone, long distance or local, and clear as traditional service. Save up to 30% on your phone bill. Get rid of multiple bills and get VOIP from Transaria. The simple solution is Transaria. Call today. The WB Tuesday is all fresh. Rory. It's the moment they thought would never come. I love you, Mom. Oh, but you have no idea. Fresh Gilmore Girls. Then the journey leads two brothers home. I swore to myself that I would never go back there. Back where tragedy struck their family. I know I've left you messages before. I need your help, Dad. Fresh Supernatural after Gilmore Girls. Everyone's falling for ABC Sunday at 9, 8 central. Even in a neighborhood full of surprises. Bree, will you marry me? Huh? No one. Did you leave the door open? Saw this one coming. I need an ambulance at Wasiri Lane. An all new Desperate Housewives at 10, 9 central. How can you haunt my sleep? I'm a hot person. A first date. And a last chance. I miss you. An all new Grey's Anatomy. It all starts Sunday, 9, 8 central only on ABC. Moments away from the second half of this afternoon's Big Sky Conference matchup between the Cats and the Eagles from Eastern Washington. Dean, it took a while for both teams to get untracked offensively. And when they did, midway through the first quarter, it produced some big plays and three touchdowns. Yeah, the first half, uh, again, Eastern behind the running of Eric Meyer, and the Bobcats uh, kept him from throwing it because of defense like that by Epi King in there to get it. And then, of course, the Bobcats, who found the ground game last week from Evan Groves, found it again. And uh, Evan uh, carried the mail, so to speak, for the Bobcats in the first half. But there's the one big play you don't want, and that's Eric Meyer finding Eric Kimball because uh, once the youngster who was born in Seoul, South Korea, gets the football, he knows what to do with it. And as they spread him wide, then they gave it to Slind. He carried once. He got one yard. But at the end of that one yard was a touchdown, and that touchdown also gave Easter in the lead. That's the difference in the ball game right now as Eastern Washington leads by a touchdown. We'll be back with more halftime in the start of the third quarter after this.
just about set to begin. Half number two, the Governor's Cup between Eastern Washington and the Bobcats of Montana State. Let's go down below to Chris Bach. Guys, I'm joined by head coach Mike Kramer. And coach, you're down 14, seven at half. What did you tell your troops? Well, we get the ball the first drive of the second half. Get a couple opportunities here to get going offensively. Doing a good job of mixing the run in the pass. We need a little bit more uh, pass catching ability. We dropped three passes in the first half. Our offense has got to get going just a little bit. On the defensive side, with the exception of one 50-yard play, are you pretty happy with the DB's performance? No, I want that 50-yard play back. Yeah, we're doing a good job, but they're, they're patient. Very veteran unit. Uh, you know, Kimball's going to make some plays the second half. The onus now is on our offense to get going. Defense has done a good job of limiting it to just to 14 points. So let's see what the offense can do here in the second half. Good luck, Coach. Thanks, brother. All right, thank you, Chris. And, uh, Dean, he said it, and you talked about it in the break when, when you and I were visiting. Very important for Montana State to come out in this third quarter and get points on the scoreboard. Well, I remember the first pay, uh, possession of the ball game, Eastern Washington had it and got nothing out of it, and the Bobcats stopped, and that was a big defensive stand for the Bobcats. Well, now this will be the Bobcats' first possession of half number two. They have to get something, and, and I like what Coach Kramer said, too. Also, we talked about that when it occurred, and that is that you got to you got to catch the football. Travis Lule gets you the ball. You got to catch the football. I mean that that that's absolutely horrible. We're not asking for circus catches. We're asking you to catch the football and hang on to it because you're not going to get that many opportunities in a game like this. Well, and as you said, if Eric Meyer gets it going and gets on a roll for the Eagles in the second half, then you're talking about possession for possession and. Uh, um, Eastern Washington more than capable of uh, putting together some big long drives putting a lot of points on the board so a key opening series for Montana State as uh, we take a look at other scores from the Big Sky Conference in the second Portland State leading Weber nine to nothing right now out in Portland. If Portland can win that when Weber State is done Weber State with two losses so they mm -hmm. could be in the in the hunt with a win but right now being shut out nine to nothing. Portland State, another one of those teams as we look at head coach Paul Wolf. Uh, Portland State right in the mix for most of the season. A hiccup a couple of times on the road like so many teams do. It is very difficult to win on the road in the Big Sky Conference. We've talked about it all season. And uh, to be away from home and to get those W's, not easy. Well, because of the uh, trip and uh, by Portland State this year during the season, some would have you believe that uh, that's a that's a big game for uh, Coach Tim Walsh. That it's almost a must-win situation out there for Portland State. Bergstrom will kick it off and for the Eagles to start the third quarter. Miller back on his goal line, and we are underway with half number two. Bergstrom line drive seals this one out of the end zone. Montana State will take over first and ten from the 20-yard line as Travis Lule. Brings the troops out to begin quarter number three. When I talk about you need to score, it's, yeah, you do need to score, obviously. That's the name of the game. But if the Bobcats went three and out, it is not the end of the ball game. I mean, don't mistake that. But uh, you really do need to maintain possession of the football, get a drive, sustained drive down there. And if you can score, uh, one of your best defensive moves would be to keep the Eastern offense off the field. And the temperature is going to change right now. It's the sun dropping down. We're under the lights. The wind has picked up a little bit. See the uh, average starting field position for Montana State. Not good. Five drives starting from the MSU 17. First and 10. Pitch to Groves up over the 20 to the 25. Gain of five. And when Evan has carried the football, positive yards. And again, starts out the second half much like he did in the first with a nice gain of five. 64 yards for Groves in that first half of play. And that's what you want. Five yards a crack, that's great. He's mm -hmm. doing his job. He's giving you a running game. He's uh, making any play action calls work, etc. So he, he's doing a good job there. Well, keep in mind, it, Cal Poly ran the ball extremely well against Eastern Washington last week, and Noble went for 228 yards, and don't think for a moment that Coach Kramer is not aware of that. This time, Groves is stuffed right at the 27, gain of two on the play. And quick in on the stop. And that's going to bring up third down. Both ball clubs have been good on third down conversions. The Bobcats were five out of nine in the first half. Eastern was five out of eight. But uh, quite obviously right now, again, you don't want to be punting into the wind. Yeah, from big, inside your own 30. You're right. You big, need a first down. Big play. Third and three from the 27 for Montana State. Opening drive of the third quarter. Lule up under center. Quick drop. Cross the middle. Has Miller completed the 40 to the 45. 
So Javon Miller stretching for the catch in a big reception there. Trufant with the tackle, but not before Miller picks up the first down. You watch Miller. Number one, he held on to it. Yep. Good for him. But number two, he was just about half a step from getting involved in a foot race to the end zone on that one. So a good saving tackle uh, by the Eagle defender. But a nice job of holding on to the football. Miller stays in along with Gatewood and Chaz Gwynn split to the right on first down from the 45. Lule fires out to Groves who makes the catch. Nice move at the 45 up to midfield. And Evan Groves stopped at the line of scrimmage, still comes up with a five-yard gain. And he was basically the safety valve on that one. Lule took a quick look and uh, Groves had just flared out on the flat on the right side. And Lule surveyed uh, the, op the options and got it to Evan Grove, and he made the first guy miss. Picked up uh, about an extra four yards or so on that. Again, a gain of five from Groves, doing his job. Second down from right at midfield. Grove stays in the backfield with Lule. He was out of the gun on second down. This time, quarterback draw. Lule. Close to the first down to the 46. He's going to be a yard short. Quick with the tackle, and that's going to set up third and one. Well, the one thing with uh, Travis Lule at quarterback and with all of his patented uh, Lule comeback magic uh, finishes, the one thing with your ball club, there's no panic because they know you're probably always going to have the opportunity. So. Uh, there's no panic going to set in. They're just behind the leader. They're paying attention to what he's telling them in the huddle and coming out and getting the job done. So third and short as Groves gets the call, tries the right side, and that's enough for the first down. Ball be marked at the 43, needed to get to the 45. But again, you look at uh, Evan Groves. I mean, he is a, a powerful running back at 5'8". 185, 190, but watch when he gets to contact and the legs are still going. A couple of pistons are moving for him. Yeah, he runs hard. Young in on the tackle for the Eagles. Drive stays alive. First down now from the 43. Opening drive of the third quarter. Montana State in Eagle territory on first down. Here's Lule, little play action, now looks long and has a man in and out of the hands of the tight end for Montana State. That's Nick Parker. And Parker unable to come up with the catch, second down. What did the coach talk about? Dropped balls. I mean, that was right there. You got to catch the ball. And again, Groves with a good block that time uh, to help out uh, Lule to give him some time. But Parker, the youngster out of Missoula, had it right there. I know it's easy uh, up here to say catch the ball, but you're suited up. You're down there. That's your job. You're supposed to catch the football. Incomplete pass will bring up second down. And Lule now again, little screen to Gatewood. And Gatewood for no gain, met right at the line of scrimmage. Denby with a nice stop and no gain. Well, the one thing on a drop ball like that on down number one, where you're now looking at second and 10, that changes your play selection of what you wanted to do. Some of the things you thought that play would set up it's incomplete. Now you're looking at a third and long. Now third and ten. Now crowd on their feet for Eastern Washington. Gatewood three catches for 34 yards on the afternoon. First big play here of this second half. I mean everybody in the stadium knows this is an obvious passing down. Three receivers split to the right on third down. Eagles show blitz. Now bring it off. They check it off to Groves who can't handle the football. And that's going to be an incomplete pass and set up fourth down. Poorly thrown ball on that one. He had no opportunity to catch that one. Now they had everybody split to the right and then circled Groves out of the backfield, but Lule unable to get him the football, so Travis now set to punt it away from the 45 and see if they can't pin the Eagles deep in their own end. But again, a drop football on the first down killed the drive in essence. One play. Kimball's back on his 10-yard line. And Lule now rolls to his right, kicks a low liner, and Kimball will let it go. The Bobcats let it roll, and it's down to the seven-yard line. So good job by Travis Lule. Eastern Washington will start deep in their own end here in this uh, third quarter. 
One reason why you're going to miss a Travis Lule more for just more than just for his throwing or running the football is punting on that. I mean, it, it wasn't a pretty thing, but there's no return, and you've got him pinned down inside the 10 yard line. Yeah, so Eric Meyer brings his team out for the first time in the second half, leading by a touchdown, but starting deep in their own end from the seven. Cole lines up in the backfield on first down. Out of the eye, standing in his end zone. And he gets the call. Hit right at the line of scrimmage, and nothing there. Maybe lost a yard on the play. Good job by the Montana State defense. Chris Coloni. And Papage. And Papage in on the stop. Yeah, there was no place to go. And again, uh, again, they stood him up. I mean, he gets the handoff, and they just stand him up and take him down. Good job by that front three of Montana State. Loss of one on the play makes it second and 11. This is where if you can get a three and out, you can get yourself back some of that good uh, field position. Meyer, seven of 13 for 111 yards. Quick drop, now fakes, now throws. Has a man wide open, complete, up over the 30 to the 35. I believe that was McIntyre that makes the catch and a big, big play for the Eagles. Made force miss first. Hunter makes a stop, but again, the pump fake throws everybody, and that's all it took for Meyer, and he has the arm. There it is. Everyone freezes up, and boom, you got your guy right there. First one misses, second one catches you, and now they've got some room to operate. So out of the shadow of their own end zone, big play for the Eagles offensively. First down from the 33. Nine and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Now Meyer checks the play at the line of scrimmage. Here comes the blitz by the Bobcats, and Meyer's going to be brought down right at the line of scrimmage. He wasn't going to get away that time. Nick Marutis made mm -hmm. sure of that. He saw him coming and tried to roll away from it, but Marutis coming right up the middle in old 43 from uh, the Bobcats. Up and makes a stop for no gain. Well, some you know that's a good play when it works when they blitz off the corners. But when you got Marutis coming straight up the middle and you're trying to run that quarterback draw, you'll see it sealed off right there. And then Marutis makes the tackle, so no gain on the play. Second and ten from the 33. An adjustment made by the Bobcats at halftime. They don't want Eric Meyer beating them by running. Here's a little screen. Little circle screen that goes for good yardage up over the 40 to the 45, and that's a first down. Again, Kimball, and you get him one on one. And usually he's going to make the first guy miss. And force with the tackle, but not before the gain is up to the 46. Well, it's been a great combination. They each have six school records on their own, and he just wants to isolate him one on one out there, get him the ball quickly, and let him go to work, and he went to work for a first down. So the Eagles with a Impressive opening drive in this third quarter as this time Cole will get it. Met again right at the line of scrimmage. Not much there, maybe a gain of one on the play. Papage and Mullahan. Papage getting in there uh, for the Bobcats. But again, Meyer just trying to find something to buy a little time, set up the pass because quite obviously what they're going to get it done with uh, is the pass. Arcosis LeBlanc in there uh, for the Bobcats uh, also that time on helping out on the stop. Give them one on the play, second and nine from the 47. Inside eight minutes to go in the third. This time Cole gets the call straight up the middle, has running room, first down inside the 40 to the 35. And how about Ryan Cole with the touchdown run, Top Grenfell with the tackle, but not before Cole gets the first down to the 35. Good job too of setting a pick by the official. Helped him out a little bit, and he uh, took good advantage of it as the official gets in the way. Whoops. And here comes Cole. Easily his best run of the afternoon. Cole with uh, 12 carries for 31 yards before that play, and an 18-yard run and a first down to the 35. First and 10. Here's Meyer with the straight drop. Looks across the middle. Now keeps the football inside the 30 to the 20. Slides to the 15. First down, Eastern Washington. Impressive play by Meyer, the quarterback as he takes it down inside the 20 for the first down. Bobcats didn't want him to beat them with his arm. Well, right now, what Eric Meyer has done in this ball game is uh, he's put the Bobcats behind because of his running ability. So he pulls it down and takes off, and the Bobcats playing catch-up, trying to get him, and now he's got him down inside the 20-yard line again. That was an 18-yard run. His totals now 11 carries for 56 yards. 
Well, 10 for 58 as we have it. First and 10 to the 17. He'd come in with a net of 70 yards, averaging 1.1 yard per carry <laughs> on the season. Here's Meyer now rolls to his left, looks for Kimball. Still looking, still looking, now throws it out of bounds. And that time, a great job by the Montana State defense. Yes, he had nowhere to put the football. Hunter back in coverage on Kimball. But he had time. That's mm -hmm. the other part of it, though. He bought himself some time. Very, well, I'll say very mobile, but maybe more mobile than uh, a lot of folks would think. Mobile enough, I guess, is the way that uh, I would describe him. He is not Travis Lule, but at uh, 6'2", 210. He does a pretty good job, as we've seen here this afternoon, of scrambling and getting out of trouble. Yeah, you get a little something going on the ground, too, Dan. You get the play action working. That freezes the, that'll freeze the linebackers, gives him a chance to roll out of the pocket and buy some time. So incomplete pass will make it second and 10 from the 17. This time again, the screen. And Vio makes a nice little move at the 15 to the 5, close to the goal line. Touchdown, Eastern Washington. What a great second effort by Vio, the wide receiver who breaks tackles at the five and gets in for the score. Well, again, talking about Kimball. Well, Kimball's at the top of the formation that time. Just came back inside to V Hill, who is uh, probably better known before he got here as a soccer player than a football player. And he, uh, second effort, gets himself right into the end zone. So Eastern Washington now opening up the lead here in the third quarter as they take the opening drive, march it down for the touchdown, extra point is up and good. 6.46 to go in the third. Eagles on top over Montana State, 21-7. Spring, summer, winter, and fall. Four Seasons does it all. Professional in parking lot and landscape maintenance. Integrity, dependability, knowledge, service. Asphalt rejuvenation to sprinkler irrigation. Tree and turf care to snow and ice liability management. Progressive, protective, curative, creative. We protect your investments. Hardscape, softscape, landscape. You can escape when you call Four Seasons. Total property maintenance. Serving all Montana and Idaho markets. One call does it all. 1-866-606-2467. In Montana, we all know that winter comes fast. So this year, be prepared with a snow-busting Ford F-150 or Super Duty. Both have sure-footed 4x4 traction, plus F-150 has the most low-end torque, the most payload, and most towing power in its class, along with up to 5,000 total cash back. Ford Super Duty is equipped with the most powerful, longest-lasting diesel available, and it comes with 2,000 cash back. Ford F-Series, built for Montana, built Ford Tough. Let's go! You know, son, you need really special winter tires. Toyo Tires actually test and develop their tires for our winter. They are all round winter tires working great on ice, snow, and other slippery surfaces. They cut into snow. They clear away moisture. Then crushed walnut shells act like tiny steel spikes digging into the surface. Can you feel that grip, son? The ultimate grip in all winter conditions. Toyo Tires, driven to perform. Scoring drive for Eastern Washington, nine plays, 93 yards, 347 off the clock. V Hill, the 17-yard touchdown after the reception, and the lead is 21-7. to Well, he may have been recruited for soccer, but he didn't run like a soccer player after he caught the football as he dragged a host of uh, Bobcat defenders right into the end zone. Kick coming down to Miller at the goal line. Bobbles the ball. And it's going to get hit inside the 10 and a horrible field position for Montana State. Not only bobbled the ball, he also lost traction and uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't get any forward motion going. Good play by the Eastern Washington kit coverage team. Emery in on the stop. And here's the touchdown, Dean. Eric Meyer, the quick little pass to Vigil. Well, this is the drive, rather, that set up the touchdown that put the Eagles on top by a couple of scores. And there's uh, Vio right there. Yep. Just keeping his head down, just grinding away. Knew where he wanted to go and got there. First and 10 from the 11 for Montana State as they start this drive. Lule looks out here and fires over the head of Rick Gatewood. How often you see a receiver duck? Yeah. <laughs> but he's the only one out there. So some uh, miscommunication right there. 
talked about early on. You remember we were talking in the first half, the average starting uh, field position for the Bobcats, their own 17, and here they are now at the 11. That's not going to help that statistic. In fact, it's going to back them up a little more. Second and 10 from the 11. Bobcat fans pretty quiet there across the field. Haven't had much to cheer about since that touchdown in the first quarter. So Lule looking at second and 10. Eagles show blitz now come out of it. Groves gets the call. Met at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a couple. That time taken down after the short gain and once again brings up third and long. And forcing the Bobcats into another obvious passing situation. And again, we talk about the field conditions for the footing. Well, we'll talk about the weather because it was a high humidity going into this. It's a, a damp cold. That wind is blowing. A little chilly down there. That football gets a little hard to handle and to catch. Let alone uh, tough enough to throw it. Third and eight from the 13. Lule out of the gun. Drops back, looks to pass. Still looking, now fires, has a man caught and dropped. Intended for Chaz Gwynn. And broken up there nicely for Eastern Washington. That's gonna bring up a fourth down. Let's go down below to Chris Bach. Well guys, one of the biggest things in this game has been dropped passes. And Coach Kramer talked to me about that at halftime, about how that would be a huge deal. Three more drop passes in this quarter, making it six overall, which has been the downfall of the receiving core, especially against the Cal Poly team. And what that is why Travis Lule has been handing the ball off a lot more. Back to you guys. Thanks, Chris. Fourth down as the Bobcats will have to kick it away. Kimball standing back near his 40-yard line. Lule angles it for the sidelines and out of bounds at the 45. 5.43 to go in the third quarter. Eastern Washington leads 21 to seven. Back in Cheney where the sun is set and Eastern Washington opening up a 14 point lead and now a quick slant pass to Kimball down to the 40 yard line still on his feet close to the 35 and that's a first down for the Eagles. What great play by Meyer throws the quick slant pattern to Kimball who takes it all the way down to the 35 yard line and a first down. Well, go to field position. The Bobcats uh, had to punt from their 11. Eastern gets it at their own 45. So there's the difference right there. And then again, you're going to let uh, Eric Meyer start finding his rhythm with Kimball, and you're in deep stuff. Well, right now the stuff is starting to get a little squishy. Yeah, and it's uh, this is the this is the time of the game if you're Montana State, where it's do or die time as far as making a defensive stand. Meyer now rolls to his right, getting good pressure, and just throws that one out of bounds. No chance to complete the pass. Nice job defensively by Clive Lowe as he applies the pressure and Meyer throws it away. But don't you think, Dean, like right at this point of the game now, if you're Montana State, you, you absolutely have to have a stop here. Well, the Bobcats got their only score, 9-11, uh, remaining in the second quarter. And since then, Eastern has scored three times, 21-7. And uh, 
They're not the kind of ball club, quite obviously, that you want to suddenly give them one more. You're down by uh, two touchdowns right now. Eastern Washington has won the battle of field position. This time, little draw play down inside the 30 to Morris, who gets the call. Marutis in on the stop. Dale Morris uh, carrying the ball, spelling Cole in relief. Morris coming into tonight's game, 203 yards on the ground for the season. This is where you need to stop if you're the Bobcats. Yeah. Got to have a stop now. Third and seven from the 30. McIntyre split wide to the left. V Hill and Kimball out to the right on third down. Myers straight back to pass, feels pressure, now rolls out of it, fires out there and complete, and a catch to the 20-yard line, and that's going to be a first down. Sneaking out there was Tyler Coleman, ridden out of bounds by LeBlanc, but not before he picks up the first down. One of the few out-of-state players on the roster, youngster out of Eugene, Oregon, but again, they made uh, Meyer run for it, but again with the good arm and sticks it right out there where your receiver can catch it in full stride. Gets him out of a hole and into a first down spot and obviously inside the 20 now. The proverbial red zone. Yeah, that was a good pass by Myers. He led Coleman perfectly to pick up the first down yardage. And now the play clock down inside 10 seconds and Meyer calls for the timeout. He's 4.26 to go in the third. 21-7 our score. Eagles continue to lead in Cheney. Hey, Bobcat fans, the Billings Hotel and Convention Center has a package just for you. For just $68, you get one night stay with a room for four complimentary continental breakfast plus water slide passes and two passes for comedy night. When you call, just ask for the Bobcat special. The Billings Hotel and Convention Center, conveniently located off the King Avenue Interchange, has all the services you expect. Dine in comfort in the restaurant or take a dip in the pool when you take advantage of the Bobcat special at the Billings Hotel and Convention Center. Why have some of Montana's largest businesses switched to Transaria? Maybe because they are Montana-owned. Or because Transaria provides service and products second to none. Mostly because Transaria can provide it all. Private networks, internet, and now VOIP. VOIP allows businesses to turn the internet into a valuable communication tool. The telephone, long distance or local, and clearest traditional service. Save up to 30% on your phone bill. Get rid of multiple bills and get VOIP from Transaria. The simple solution is Transaria. Call today. There's a silent killer in your home. You can't see it or smell it, but left undetected, carbon monoxide poisoning can cause flu-like symptoms, confusion, or even death. Keep your family safe. Have your furnace cleaned and checked every year. And if you suspect carbon monoxide poisoning, leave the area immediately. Call Northwestern Energy and get medical help. There is a seal problem. Northwestern Energy, dedicated to serving you. Eastern Washington leading 21-7 and with the football and a first and 10 on the Montana State 18-yard line. They're in field goal range now, and they would have, well, the wind's kind of calm right now, but wind would not be a factor. First down call to stay on the ground. And this is Morris inside the 10. And taken out of bounds. Jason Gathing makes the stop, but Morris close to another first down. Well, what you've done, obviously, with the ground game for Eastern, trying to find a, a little bit of an edge. Well, you found the edge because you get the ground game going a little bit because you know that uh, Meyer can throw it. You know he's got two or three guys who can catch it. And right now, uh, you've given them a... Nice little extra page or two in the playbook. Well, they're close enough to measure, so Meyer will come over and check with coaches here as the ball is right at the eight-yard line. Chance for Eastern Washington to really break this game open and just short of the first down. So it'll be second and inches. Just a few inches short of the first down. Trying to either stay warm or keep from tightening up. It's Rick Gatewood on the bike and anxious to get back in the game. 
as is the Montana State offense. So he's doing his version of the tour to Cheney. <laughs> Here's the passing numbers and uh, almost double for Eastern Washington over Montana State as Kramer or Meyer rather starting to crank it up for the Eagles. Second down as we wind down to the four minute mark of the third quarter. Morris stays in at tailback. And Slime this time gets the call. The fullback slams up in there, and that's enough for the first down as he takes it to the six. Well, also, Eastern now by finding a little bit of a ground game, able to uh, chew up some of the clock, and it works for them the same way it does for the Bobcats. You keep the ball out of Travis Lule's hands. So Slim gets the first down for the Eagles. Fresh set of downs, first and goal from the six. Just 17 yards on the day, but he's got all three touchdowns. First and goal. This time Morris takes it. Not much there. Bent over backwards right at the line of scrimmage. That one hurt. That's yeah. when you hope you did the stretching exercises before you got in there. No gain on the play, so that's going to bring up... Uh, Second down, Mullahan in a stop for the Bobcats. Of course, one of the differences, the leading rusher for Eastern is still quarterback Eric Meyer. Mm -hmm. and he uh, has picked up almost many on the ground in this one, as he had for the entire season coming into this ball game. Ryan Cole now back into the game. He's the lone back behind Meyer. And this time looks out, fires over the middle in the end zone, pass incomplete. A little bit of a tussle in the uh, end zone. The ball goes over both of them, but uh, King was right there in the middle of it for the Bobcats uh, defending down there, but the official standing there watching it and obviously did not drop a flag, but uh, uh, Tim Calhoun, the tight end there, and King, linebacker, covering the tight end right in the middle under the goal post. They both go down incomplete. VL checks back into the game now at wide receiver on third down. Coleman also in on third down. Meyer complete. Is he in? Touchdown, Eastern Washington. The slant pattern gets enough to get into the end zone for the score. And Hill brings it in for the touchdown. And the lead is now 27 to 7. Well, now you have a big chunk to overcome, don't you? Right. Yeah, V Hill has uh, certainly been impressive today. Checks into the lineup and catches the quick slant pattern. Gets into the end zone from six yards out. Two touchdowns for him. Two for him, 27 to seven now. And the kick for the extra point is up and good. 2.48 to go in the third quarter. Eastern Washington starting to open things up as they lead 28 to seven over Montana State.
Eastern Washington extending its lead over the Bobcats in Cheney as they go nine plays, 55 yards. V Hill, the six yard touchdown catch from Meyer. It is now a 28 7 game for Eastern with 2.48 to go in the third. Another impressive drive, Dean, by Eastern Washington. 14 points in uh, the second, 14 points in the third. This is Gatewood at the goal line. He'll bring it out up over the 15. Has some running room to the 30. And Gatewood up to the 31-yard line. Brought down by Jake Young. And the Bobcats with good field position now to start this drive. Something they have not had for much of the afternoon. Well, this will change your play selection a little bit, too. At 28-7, uh, to 7, going to gamble a little bit more and go for the big one. But again, V Hill just on the slant coming in there and right into the end zone. Little guy hangs on. So much talk about Eric Kimball, and deservedly so, but V Hill came into this game with 54 catches, second on the team, and he has been impressive today. So first and 10 from the 30. Montana State trying to get something going offensively. They have not scored since the second quarter. Now a fumble on the center quarterback exchange and the Eagles have it. Wow, what a big time play by the Eastern Washington defense as they get on the football and have it at the 30 yard line. Lule started back before he had the football in his hands and the missed connection puts the Eagles right back deep in Bobcat territory again but you watch Lule as he starts to pull back well, the ball a little bit lower, but he didn't have it in his hands. Spins away and goodbye football. And here's the Eagles again. Marcus Walker falls on it. So Eastern Washington with a chance to really bust this one open now. Leading 28 to 7 with the football on the 30 yard line. It really negates the best field position the Bobcats have had since early in the first half. Well, two things drop passes, which uh, shouldn't happen, and you kind of take that for granted. The guy's going to catch the ball that's right there. And then the uh, center quarterback exchange. And this is Kimball. Has running room inside the 20. Good, tough running by Kimball. Right up the middle for first down yardage. Ryan Force in on the stop, but not before he takes it down to the 18-yard line. Well, the other thing the Bobcats have done, and, and that's another one, you give Eastern Washington a little bit of momentum, which they've uh, established, and they've managed to keep the wagon rolling. And the big gap right there, and Kimball knows how to run with the football when he gets it, because he was a running back when he came here. They switched him outside to a wide receiver, so he knows what to do with the football. He doesn't just catch it, he knows how to run with it. Ryan Cole now back at running back. Here's Meyer getting pressure, he's gonna go down. Nick Maruta's yep. coming up to say how do you do and he went on the shoulder I think Meyer he's not feeling too good right now. Boy Eric Meyer down on the ground and that is the last thing the Eastern Washington sidelines wants to see right now leading by three touchdowns and Maruta's, Meyer is uh, on the on the carpet. Just grabbed him and uh, tossed him down and I don't know if it's a shoulder but that would be my first guess as he was down, he was in pain, obviously, still down. But Marutis has been in there. Pretty good job here in the ball game all afternoon of putting some pressure on. But Myers have managed to avoid quite a bit of it also. Going to see it again, Dean, and again, just good pressure right up the middle for Montana State. Stop to throw, nobody there. Here's Marutis, and he grabs him and then throws him. Bam, that's right on the yep. throwing shoulder right there, and I'm guessing it's a shoulder. He gets him again and then just hauls him down. Uh, well, Chris Pierboom is the backup out of Beaverton, Oregon, and he's warming up on the sidelines, and he's going to come in, and, boy, this is tough if you're an Eastern Washington fan. It's tough to watch this because... Uh, there is much more at stake than just this football game right now for Eric Meyer and, and this team. Yeah, you don't want to see anybody get hurt, and that was just a good, clean tackle spunning around and dropped him. But uh, we talked about momentum. Well, that could swing the thing a little bit, too, because, again, uh, the center quarterback exchange, the old thing called rhythm, the rest of the team, rhythm, receivers, and so on. you got a whole new guy in there that you're not used to seeing much of. Second and 18 from the 26. Pierboom will stay on the ground and gives it to Morris, who squirts up close to the 21-yard line. 
taken down by Marutis, and that'll make it third down. Third and long for the Eagles. So Meyer out of the ball game. Kerboom has only played in one game, 0 for 3, throwing the football, and that's been about it on the season. Well, right now for Eastern Washington, it's all about taking time off the clock. We're down to a minute to go in the third quarter. And this time, Piraboom is back to throw. He gets pressured, rolls out of it, still looking, now fires to the sideline, incomplete. So a good job by the Bobcat defense. Incomplete pass brings up fourth down. And Dean, the third quarter really owned by Eastern Washington. Yep, and they had several big plays, but this might have been the biggest one as you just get it right in there to be Hill, and then he does the rest on his own. Not the biggest guy on the field, not even close. He just went in and uh, took force in there with him. So Sheldon Weddle on for the field goal attempt. The ball will be spotted at the 30-yard line. This will be a 40-yard field goal attempt. He's two for two from this distance. The ball's down, kick on its way. Plenty of distance. But no good, sails wide left. So the Bobcats stay alive on the stop, trailing 28 to seven, and there's Meyer on the sideline. We'll try to get word on what his status is up walking around now, but he was taken down hard, right down on his throwing shoulder. Let's take a look at some of the other scores from around the big sky. Portland State continues to lead over Weber, 16 to nothing, that game now in the second quarter. That would eliminate Weber from the title hunt in the big sky if that score holds up. And Northern Arizona trailing to Idaho State. That's in the third quarter, 28-21. Been a very long year for Northern Arizona. Bobcats have the football, first and 10. Lule now rolls out of the pocket. Still looking, keeps it now, takes it up over the 25, close to the 30. And Lule with some good hard running. Good coverage by the secondary for Eastern. Bobcats need to take advantage of this. They held Eastern without a point. Still trail by three touchdowns, but still have a quarter plus 39 seconds. And you got the best at comebacks right there, number 14 for the Bobcats. Well, he gets six on the play, so second and four from the 29. Denby on that last stop for the Eagles to drive Travis out of bounds. And Lule, plenty of time to throw, still looking. Now he's in trouble, gets rid of the football and incomplete. Well, they've given him plenty of time on consecutive plays. Let's go down below to Chris Bach. Injury update, guys. Uh, spoke with the head trainer here at Eastern Washington. He said that Eric Meyer suffered a head injury on that last sack. He went down pretty hard and snapped his neck back. His return is questionable at this point, and that's all he can tell me is a head injury. So we'll see if he's out there next series. Back to you guys. It wasn't the shoulder, yeah. obviously. So all things considered, uh, maybe a break for Meyer is shaken up on the play, but no injury to the shoulder. And Lule now with the third and four from the 29. You see his numbers, just 11 of 25 on the afternoon. Great job by the Eagle defense this afternoon. Here's Lule, fires across the middle, and this one is intercepted. Intercepted and coming back the other way. Down inside the five, touchdown Eastern Washington. Whoa, what a big play by Brian Jarrett as he steps in front of the Lule pass and takes it all the way to the end zone for the touchdown. That's his first interception of the season, and obviously his first uh, touchdown after an interception, too. Nice pick by him, and they almost uh, pulled him down. He got away and kept right on going. He's a youngster transferred here out of Western Washington University in uh, Bellingham. Thought he could play at this level, and judged by that one play, obviously he can. Boy, that was a huge play for Eastern Washington. They have blown this game open with 19 seconds to go in the third. Weddle on for the extra point. Ball is up and good. 35 to seven, all Eastern Washington in Cheney as they lead over Montana State. So Lule picks a bad time to throw the interception. And Jarrett Dean just stepped right in front of it, took it back the other way for six. Well, the bad news is the defense held Eastern out of the end zone, and the offense came back and gave him one. Over the middle, and right there, he didn't see him. 
Picks it right off, but Watts there missed tackle. Couldn't bring him down, and then he knew how to hug the sidelines, and he got to the end zone. He sniffed it all the way and went in for six. Nice job after the interception. Take a look at it again. Look at Lule throwing. Just stepping right up, picking it off. Didn't see him. Nice wall of blockers out there in front of him, too, as they get the, uh, the touchdown back the other way. So the Eagles busting this one open late in the third, leading 35-7. to seven. Jarrett, the free safety, playing a little bit of center field back there and saw the fly ball coming and snatched it. And now you talk about opening up your offense. You don't have much, uh, much else to do, trailing 35-7 to seven through three quarters. And short kick coming down to Dominic inside the 10 yard line. Up over the 15. Hit right at the 20. Shams it in with the tackle, so the Cats have it from the 20, trailing 35 to 7. And what Dean, they really ran into a buzzsaw after the midway point of the second quarter. Started nice, taking the early 7 to nothing lead, but 35 unanswered points by Eastern Washington. Well, a scoreless first quarter, which we said was a surprise, these two ball clubs, and then it's 7 to nothing Bobcats, and then Eastern comes back and ties it up. You think, well, now the ball game is on. Both ball clubs have loosened up a little, and after that, uh, the Bobcats got loose on both sides of the ball. Meanwhile, Eastern tightened it up and put 28 more on the board after their first seven. But they've scored, as you said, 35 unanswered points. First down for Montana State. Lou Lay fires across to Murray. Jermaine Murray with the catch at the 35. Taken down, a first down play as Hendrickson on the stop. Eight seconds to go in the third quarter in Montana State. See if they can get one off before the end of the quarter. Don't and think they are. Nope. nope. They're not even going to be set. Nope. That's going to do it. Three quarters are in the books from Cheney. Eastern Washington all over Montana State. They lead 35-7. to seven. Back with the start of the fourth quarter, Eastern Washington big in this one over Montana State, 35 to seven. Cats have a first and 10 from the 36. Lule throws it out, complete. And that's Gatewood, takes it up for Montana State first down. 
It'll go no huddle just to keep it going because you have a full quarter, but uh, the bad news is you trail by four touchdowns. Total yards in this game, 338 for Eastern Washington, 242 for Montana State. I mean, you got to score, stop, score, stop, score, mm -hmm. stop, score, stop. Score, stop. Yeah. <laughs> I ran out of score stops here. That's one score stop short. First and 10 from the 49. That was intended for Tremaine Murray. Good coverage back there. Incomplete pass brings up second down. Yeah, the good news, it does stop the clock, and it's ironic with 14.37 to go in the fourth if you talk about stopping the clock, but Cats need all the time they can get. Well, what's uh, what's been impressive in this game, at least in my mind, Dean, is the well-documented offense of Eastern Washington over 500 yards a game, but defensively they have been so good today. You see the total yards by Eastern, and... Montana State well under its average coming in. So second and 10 from the 49. Here's Lule with the quick drop to Chaz Gwynn who makes the catch and down to the 30 yard line. Just like that, the Bobcats come up with the first down quick in on the tackle, but the Eagles defense, Dean, has been very solid today. Yeah, the Eagle defense has come up with a big play similar to the Eagle offense. And the biggest play of the night, I still think, is the INT for the touchdown because you'd be looking at 28 to seven. Right. That, that extra seven is a big difference. Well, and now if you're Eastern Washington, if the Bobcats can push a score across, then you got to rethink what you're going to do with Meyer as the pass is incomplete to Gatewood. He went out with the head injury, and if the Cats would pick up a quick touchdown, then, you, you know, do you take the risk and put him back in, or do you stay with Pierre Boom in the fourth quarter? Well, you have a great option because with a 35, let's say 35-14, that's still three more possessions. So you've got an option to at least uh, let him go a series and see what happens. But... Uh, you don't have to, and that's that's the uh, bad news for the Bobcats. The good news for Eastern, a deal like this, that they have the option now if they just want to let uh, Eric Meyer sit. So Montana State trying to pick up a quick score here early in the fourth quarter. Second and ten, here comes the blitz. The screen is there, and Groves drops the football at the 30. Well, the drop footballs have been plentiful tonight for yeah. the Bobcats, and now we're going to get a penalty flag back here because Lule way away from the play and all the way in the back. Got himself a little extra attention and it's going to be uh, called on Keith Grennan, the junior transfer out of Central Washington University out in Ellensburg. A personal foul against Grennan, automatic first down. And that's going to move the football down deep into Eastern Washington territory. So the Cats get a big break there. As they're down to the 15 and a first down. Just the second penalty on Eastern Washington today. Five for the Bobcats. Yeah, they have made many mistakes, and that was a big one. And that gives the Bobcats a great opportunity to get a quick six. You know, they need them and need them in a hurry. Eastern Washington shows blitz now. They back off. Lule again screen to Gatewood. Picks up a block, but hit right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe two on the play. Good coverage by the Eagle secondary to shut that play down after the catch. Instead of going north and south, he elected to go east and west to try to buy himself some more room, and he had no place to go. The door is closed down for not much of anything. Piffero in on the stop, so second and eight from the 13. Early fourth quarter, 35 to seven, our score, as the Eagles have put on a show here in the second half. Lule out of the gun, surveys the field, looks across the middle, now fires into the end zone, and touchdown Montana State. Chaz Gwynn in the end zone, takes the pass from Travis Lule, and the Bobcats are on the board for the first time since early in the second quarter. Put the laser on him right there. Got him right between the one and the nine, and he held on. But uh, that's what you need. A relatively quick strike, aided uh, by a mistake by Eastern with the 15-yard penalty. So Hastings on for the extra point. Ball down, kick on the way. 
and it's good. 13-26 to go in the fourth. Bobcats on the board in the second half, 35 to 14, our score. Rest assured in Montana, winter comes fast. So be prepared with an all-wheel drive Ford 500 or Freestyle. These fuel-efficient vehicles have a five-star safety rating and are specially equipped with your family's wintertime driving in mind. With an intelligent, electronically controlled all-wheel drive system for improved steering and handling on Montana's snow-packed roads. And now lease a Ford 500 or Freestyle competitively priced at just $2.99 a month. The all-wheel drive Freestyle and 500. Built for Montana. Built for the road ahead. Hi, I'm Eric Kinnaman. And I'm Joe Baker. You know, a few years ago, Eric and I were teammates here at Montana State University. As members of CAP football, we live the values of honor, integrity, loyalty, and personal courage. As a team, Bobcat football breeds pride, tradition, and camaraderie. Today, Joe and I carry on these values as proud members of the Montana Army National Guard. The Montana Guard has a proud and stored history of serving our great state and nation. You too can be a member of this team. And every once in a while, we still get the chance to lay the head on someone. You know, son, you need really special winter tires. Toyo Tires actually test and develop their tires for our winter. They're all round winter tires working great on ice, snow, and other slippery surfaces. They cut into snow. They clear away moisture. Then crushed walnut shells act like tiny steel spikes digging into the surface. Can you feel that grip, son? The ultimate grip in all winter conditions. Toyo Tires, driven to perform. Still plenty of time left in this one. 13, 26 to go in the fourth. Montana State back on the board. Eight plays, 80 yards. Chaz Gwynn bringing in the touchdown pass from Travis Lule. Minute 53. I think that's the key of the whole thing there besides the score. McCumber will take it at the five up over the 15. Hit at the 15. Stays on his feet and finally taken down just inside the 20. That's his version of the pinball wizard. <laughs> yeah. Got nailed the first time, got away from the flipper, and the second time he got drilled. He probably should have gone down the first time. Uh, yeah, I think he probably shouldn't have gone to the flipper. I think he should have just... As we take a look at the touchdown pass again, Lule with plenty of time and finds Gwynn in the end zone. Fourth catch of the night. But, I mean, he put the laser on yeah. that. Helps a little bit that your defender's falling down, but still, that ball was coming. Here, Boom will stay in at quarterback for Eastern Washington, and I... I think right now it's all about taking time off the clock and see if we get a heavy dose of Ryan Cole here in the fourth quarter. He'll take the ball on first down. Good running up over the 25 to the 30, and that's a first down. Finally taken down by Ryan Force. But that's exactly what you want to do if you're Eastern Washington, is you want to control the clock and run the football. Before you scratch your head a little bit, you know the odds are they're not going to throw it. And yet here they come with the running play. And he's all the way into the secondary and Force has to make the stop. 11 yard gain, first down, more important. Keeps the clock moving. So we're at the 30 yard line, then a first down. Cole's numbers on the day, not bad. He's the lone back behind Pierre Boom. He gets the call again, tries the left side, and again finds good running room. Gain of five on the play to the 35. Reeling off five, eating up clock. Just keeps ticking. Mac Mullahan in on the stop for Montana State. I mean, the only thing the Bobcats need right now is the football. That's it. That's, well, that's the good news. The bad news is it's tough to have the only thing. Let's project this game out a little bit, Dean, assuming Eastern hangs on for the win. Obviously, it positions them with a chance to win the Big Sky and places a premium, of course, for Montana State on the Cat Grizz game next Saturday. Well, yeah, they'd need some help from the Bobcats to beat the Grizz, but then in a tiebreaker, they'd be the champ. Yep. Of course, they beat Montana in Missoula, trying to do likewise to Montana State today. And again, good hard running close to the first down, be about a yard short. So a third down play here. We're down to the 12-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Here's a do or die third down right now. This is a really big one. Eastern Washington will just try to manage the clock and the football here. Put together a long drive with their starting quarterback, Eric Meyer, out. Shaken up in the waning moments of the third quarter. So third and one from the 39.
Bobcats stack the line of scrimmage. Cole gets the call, slams in there, and he's not going to get it. Nope, he's not there. He is short of the 40-yard line. That's a fourth down. Now what do you do if you're Eastern? Oh, I think you got to kick it away. I mean, you, you, you certainly don't want to give Montana State the chance to have the football from the 39. Still no call yet, though. I'm looking over there. Yeah. I'm going to go for it. Now, now the punting unit comes on. Actually, they're letting the uh, play, clock, clock, yeah. play clock start going. They want to use up as much time as they can. And also, the Bobcats had to hold their guys over there until they saw what Eastern is going to do. So Eastern Washington letting the clock run all the way down to one second on the play clock. Ball is kicked away and a good one down inside the 20 yard line fielded there by Corey Austin. Tries to get to the outside but brought down at the 27. Well, Montana State back with the football trailing by three touchdowns. Let's go down below to Chris Bach. Well, guys, before the game, we talked about how Montana State needed to win on the road. And if they won these last two games against Eastern and the Grizz, they had a pretty good shot of hosting a playoff game and they would have been Big Sky champs. But that's all hindsight because in barring the last second comeback victory like Weber State, they're going to drop to 7-4 and four or 6-4 and four and no chance of hosting a playoff game if they make it. All right, Chris, so first down for Montana State. Lule with all kinds of time. Fires out there for Murray. Incomplete. Well, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't uh, put a ribbon on this victory just yet if I was Eastern Washington. You're, you're down three. Cats being down three touchdowns, but still plenty of time. Scored on their last drive, have the football back, so. Well, yeah, and your uh, move into the playoffs, if you don't win, is determined by a committee also, so let's not... Uh, Say that the possibility is dead yet either. A lot of things can happen. We got a ways to go on this one anyway. Second down, pass complete to Gatewood, who goes down right at the 30 yard line. Short gain on the play. Sixth catch of the night for Rick Gatewood. Denby in on the stop for the Eagles. More important, clock continues to run. Yeah, Bobcats need the quick strike. And everybody in the stadium knows to get that, they have to throw it. So that's what Eastern Washington is playing. Notice that uh, Lule has had a difficult time finding anybody in a white jersey to get uh, the football. Justin Dominic now in the backfield for Montana State. Third and six from the 31. Lule will find Dominic, who makes the catch up over the 40 and out of bounds. A couple of good things happen right there, Dean. Number one, Dominic caught the football. We've seen some drop passes. Number two, he knew right where the yard marker was. And number three, he got the first down. You bet, yeah. Uh, Good heads up play. And he was not the first choice. But he's wide open, gets it, runs out of bounds. Stop. First down, stops the clock. Stops the clock and a fresh set of downs. The gain to the 41. Shortens up the field. So a big third down completion for Lule. And quick drop now on first down. Looks across, complete to the 45, short gain. Eastern only rushing three and dropping eight. I mean, they're playing pass defense all the way. Yeah, Denby on the stop. Now they're going to give Montana State that, that play you that all day. All night. You get uh, four yards on the catch, but you're going to waste about 45 seconds on that play getting back to the line of scrimmage. Give you the dink route to the end zone. Yeah. That dink route takes forever. Second and six. From the 45, nine minutes to go in the fourth. Bobcats trying to rally back. They trail 35-14. Lule looks across the middle, still looking, now keeps the football. Heads for the sideline, and he won't get there. Clock will continue to run. Shams it in with a great play defensively as he runs Lule down. Sham Sedin with the big stop, so third and three from the 48. He's a kid that graduated in four years and got himself another year back. He had to sit out the first year as a qualifier, graduated in four, and gets one more senior year. Well, that's so, fun. Well, you don't yeah. have to go to school. Yeah. You got to yeah, love that. Did a great job. You just play football. I don't know if he's taking that one dance class like they do at <laughs> Southern Cal, but that's something going for hey, itself. You got the diploma. You do whatever you want. Third and three. 
Fires out there and complete. That's a first down. Barnhart stays on his feet at the 40. Quick with the stop, but again, that's another third down conversion for Montana State. Great job of just being a human battering ram after he catches the football. Great job of hanging on, taking the hit, holding on, and just keep going. Boy, they had a tough time bringing him down. Quick finally jumped in there and got him down. But again, you're uh, eating up a lot of time now. Gain is down to the 39. First down. Here's Lule. Back to pass. Looks across. Has a man wide open. Complete. Close to another first down. And Denby with the stop. And I believe Chaz Gwynn on the reception picks up eight on the play. So second and two. Lule has now thrown for more yards tonight than Eric Meyer. Goulet is 21 of 42 on the day. Finds Gatewood, and that's probably a, a pass you don't want to catch. Now he is no longer ahead of Meyer in the <laughs> yardage department tonight. <laughs> well, he had it for one yeah, play. Easy come, easy go. Yeah, that is. Uh, now he'll go back ahead because that's the only way he's going to get a first down now is to throw that ball. Third and six, the loss back to the 35. Seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Eastern Washington shows blitz. They back it off, and Lule drops back. Now throws for Murray, and a little too high at the 15. Murray had uh, looked like he was open for a moment, but the ball sails high and brings up fourth down. Elliot Barnhart was wide open, went down to the 25 and stood there. He would have had about three or four yards for the first down and stood there, and Lule passed on him. and. Tried a little tougher throw and didn't make it. Now this might be your ball game right here. This oh, might yeah. be the last time the Bobcats see the football. No question, four down territory, fourth and six. 6.54 to go in the game. You see the numbers on Lule. Crowd is on their feet at Woodward Field. Lule rolls to his right, now fires. Intended for Gatewood at the 20, incomplete pass, and the Eagles take over. He was already on the ground when the ball came his way. He and the defender got tangled up a little bit. Lule had Dominic out in front of him, probably could have run for it. But uh, 6.49 to go, they give up the football, the drive is dead, and now the key for Eastern. Chewing up the clock, the Bobcats are three timeouts remaining, but there are three scores back. That took up a lot of time. That did. Up it, with nothing. That did. They uh, they chewed a lot of the fourth quarter up on that drive. Looked like Travis might have been able to run for the first down, but tried to gun it in there to Gatewood. And you see, you see his jersey. He's been a busy guy today, and uh, no quit in Travis Lule today. Is he is sold out on every play. Now we're going to see a whole lot of this guy, Ryan Cole, just to gain a two on the play. Yeah, Eastern's going to take all the time they possibly can. Doubt that uh, they'd even uh, think about throwing the football. Yeah, Grenfell, uh, Grenfell in on the step. Yeah, with Meyer out of the game and a three touchdown lead, we're going to see uh, everything exclusively on the ground. I think they're content to go three and out because you go three and out and punt the ball. That's what two, two and a half minutes off the clock, and and. Uh, in a long field for Montana State. So second and eight after the two-yard gain. This is Cole again. A little bit of running room to the 39. And that gets three more on the play. Well, this is similar to when the Bobcats have the ball. Everybody in the stadium knows uh, they're going to throw it. Everybody in the stadium knows here that Eastern Washington is going to run it. And uh, the Bobcat fans now are uh, singing tumbling tumbleweeds as they tumble right out to the parking lot. Be a long trip home for the uh, emptying out the stands on the far side, which were chock full of Bobcat fans when this one kicked off. Third and five from the 39. And this time, here comes the blitz, and Pierre Boom's going down at the 30 yard line. Well, that's probably a double bad call. Yeah. Because it's going to force you to punt, and number two, you're going to give the Bobcats a little bit better field position than they would have gotten if you just run the football. Now, LeBlanc came up off the corner, but it was Mullahan with the tackle. Losses all the way back to the 32, so fourth and 12. Eastern Washington will kick it away. 
Donker standing back just inside his 20 at the five minute mark. Using every bit of that play clock. Just gets this one away. Austin fields it at the 35. Makes a move to the 40. Up to midfield. Austin still on his feet. Then fumbles the football. And Eastern Washington says nope. they have the football. They're going to call it down at the 50-yard yep, line. They'll call it down at 50. 4.42 to go in this one in the fourth. Eastern Washington leads big over Montana State. Bobcats running out of time here in the fourth quarter, trailing 35 to 14, but have the football in midfield. And Medine, you got to give a whole lot of credit to this Eastern Washington defense today. What a job they've done as Dominic goes out of bounds, but a flag. Eastern's done well, not just defensively, but on offense as well. This is a team that came off a loss to Cal Poly last week. They gave up 228 yards on the ground to Noble and looked like they were on the verge of playing themselves right out of the Big Sky chase. They come home, they get a huge win over Montana State, ranked 11th in the country. They're right back in this thing. Well, their deal is on this, they walk out of here with a win. Now the pressure has shifted. They're done with their league season. They have Cal Davis coming in here next week, but they're done. And if the Bobcats can beat the Grizz Holding in Bozeman. On the offense, number 53, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Then Eastern's in the driver's seat on all the tiebreakers. That's right. So they, they'd suddenly would, uh, if they beat the Bobcats, they'd suddenly become the biggest Bobcat fans around. <laughs> well, they will certainly be watching the outcome of that game next week. Cat Grizz next week in Bozeman, and uh, Eastern Washington on the verge of picking up a big win here. First and 20 after the penalty for Montana State. Lule looks out there for Tremaine Murray and broken up nicely. So Eastern Washington will close the regular season in the Big Sky, pending this win today at 5-2. and two. And for the moment, uh, as you mentioned, they are done with conference play. Let's take a look at some other scores from around the Big Sky Conference. Some Montana right now in Sacramento State. This one is tied at 7 in the first quarter. Sacramento State down there praying for a power outage. <laughs> as close as they're going to get. <laughs> Selling the Hornets short of that game? Yeah, I would say so. All right, second and 20 from the 40. And Lule, this time nothing there, pulls the ball down. And he is out of bounds at the 40-yard line. He's rolled to his left, but no one out there to throw to. Well, Paul Wolf with a win here would be uh, four and two against his former boss, Mike Kramer. Shams Adin runs him out of bounds. Yeah, that's right. Uh, of course, Eastern through the years has had, as we said, uh, I mean, their, their winning percentage against the Bobcats is incredible. But it's pretty good. They've just kind of had their way. Bobcats have only won once out here in Cheney anyway. And that was in the darkness in the field goal in overtime. 19 to 8, Eastern leads the head to head series with Montana State. 8 and 3 here at home on third and 19. This time they throw underneath the coverage. Flag comes down, ball dropped by Barnhart. 
at the 48. And far shy of the first down anyway, but yeah. a penalty flag again on that one. And it's holding against Montana State, so things going from bad to worse here in the waning moments of this football game. And you mentioned uh, Eastern Washington will close holding with an on the offense, number 53. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. With a non-conference game last week, and and. Uh, will await the, the outcome of the Cat Grizz game next week. Eastern Washington, funny team. You know, they they have the four losses on the year. They put up monster numbers offensively. They've beaten teams like Montana in Missoula and then turned around and lost. Lost at yeah. Idaho State and lost, lost at Weber. to Weber State. So they, they, they have been an up-and-down team in some ways, but when you have a quarterback like Eric Meyer that uh, – has put up the kind of numbers he has. Uh, you know, you got to feel like you've always got a chance. So fourth down, obviously the Bobcats will go for it here, and Lule is going to bring it down and try to run for it, and he'll be taken down before he gets to midfield. Drops the football. Penalty flags. Penalty flags come in as a little extra skirmish down there. You're in front of the eastern sideline. Hendricks in on the stop. Now, either way, they're going to get the football. Well, the official is going to no. uh, sort it out. Eastern signaling they recovered the, the ball as Lule was taken out of bounds right near midfield. the fumble recovery personal foul on Montana State number 74 15 yards from the end of the spot now yeah, that doesn't help you need Lawrence Figueroa well frustration foul after the fumble so <coughs> Eastern Washington just try to run out the clock here and put this one to bed leading 35 to 14 and what started well for Montana State and head coach Mike Kramer Quickly turning sour in this second half as he comes back to Cheney where he spent six seasons as the head coach at Eastern Washington and is going to walk out of here with a loss. Pierre Boom will stay in at quarterback and Meyer will stay on the sidelines as we're set to play the final four minutes. Morris in a tailback now for the Eagles. Nothing big today offensively running the game but very effective. And Morris takes the call, and he'll be ridden down. Nice job there by Force. No gain, maybe even half a yard lost. But uh, the other thing in running wide, that's just a few more seconds that mm -hmm. you keep it going because that uh, play clock doesn't start till they spot the ball. I believe the Bobcats going to burn a timeout. Montana State, with all of its timeouts remaining, uses one here with 3.55 to go in the fourth quarter. And we'll step aside, 35-14 our score, all Eastern in Cheney. Why have some of Montana's largest businesses switched to Transaria? Maybe because they are Montana owned or because Transaria provides service and products second to none. Mostly because Transaria can provide it all. Private networks, internet, and now VOIP. VOIP allows businesses to turn the internet into a valuable communication tool. The telephone, long distance or local, and clearest traditional service. Save up to 30% on your phone bill. Get rid of multiple bills and get VOIP from Transaria. The simple solution is Transaria. Call today. This is it. A new season, a new look, a time to build on the past and create a new future. A time to take all the work, dreams, and promise and bring it to the field. Can Travis Lule orchestrate his offense to the team's third victory in four years over the Grizz? Can the revamped defense return to prominence in the Big Sky Conference? Can Mike Kramer hang another conference championship banner in the field house? Join me, Chris Bach, every week as we track the Bobcats and find answers to these questions on an all-new show, Bobcat Football with Mike Kramer. Everyone's falling for ABC Sunday at 9, 8 central. Even in a neighborhood full of surprises. Bree, will you marry me? Huh? No one. Did you leave the door open? Saw this one coming. 
I need an ambulance at Wasiri Lane. An all-new Desperate Housewives at 10 9 Central. How can you haunt my sleep? I'm a hot person. A first date. And a last chance. I miss you. An all-new Grey's Anatomy. It all starts Sunday, 9, 8 Central, only on ABC. And, Dean, this is maybe the play that turned it around for Eastern Washington. Yeah, that one extra score, one of the big differences, the Bobcats moving and, boom, needed a score, needed to get something done, and they get the, not only the interception but return for the touchdown. And that probably just uh, tipped the old seesaw all the way over. So second and 11 for the Eagles from the 33. Down to the final four minutes of this game, and here, boom, rolling right. Looks to pass, now just goes down. Flag on the play, taken down at the 36-yard line. Well, we get a who me look, and <laughs> it's going to be a clip against Eastern. Yeah, it's you. Who me? Yeah, when you put the arms out, it's like you're uh, automatically I mean, guilty, I right? I mean, he'd surrendered. They hadn't even called the penalty, and he'd <laughs> surrendered there. The old palms up. Who me? <laughs> Bobcats may want to decline that anyway. Here we'll get the official call. Clipping on the offense, number 53, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, replay second down. Big Chris Carlson, a sophomore, at his 270 pounds in a position that they weren't meant to be in a football game <laughs> unless you want to get a flag. Well, the loss is all the way back to the 48, so. Bob Kessel pass on yeah. that. Yeah. Make him flip the down marker. Yeah. Bobcats should get it back one more time. Coach Kramer over there on the sideline saying to he wants to decline the penalty, so that'll bring up third down. Again, I don't think Pierre Broom is going to throw. I think he's just rolling out to buy some time. He'll stay in at quarterback on third down. They decline the penalty. It's been an interesting year in the Big Sky Conference. The Bobcats take another mm -hmm. timeout. So the second of three timeouts used by the Bobcats here in this fourth quarter with 3.51 to go. Well, for us at uh, Bobcat football, uh, tonight's the end of the line of, of our seventh and final game covering Montana State. And uh, it's been fun, partner. I've enjoyed working yeah, it with has. you. It's been, uh, been quite an experience, to say the least. We've, uh, We've seen some dandies. Of course, we were featured in the flickering light episode down in San Luis Obispo. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of the many highlights there. Huh? Well, I can I remember the uh, of all the games we did. That that's the one moment that I hear about over and over and over again is the Cal Poly game. But uh, I know you've been around and uh, covered Bobcat football for years and years and years and. Uh, You've seen some great ones come and go. We talked about Kelly Bradley, but Travis Lule, one of the great ones of all time, and what a season he's had. Yeah, he's had, he's had his moments uh, for the Bobcats. Well, let's uh, remember from his freshman year. We take a look at this one. Throw pressure's on over the middle. Junior Adams has it, 35, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Junior Adams and the Bobcats. No fly, 53 yards. In his last season. That was a big one. The freshman kid did it, 10 to 7 in Missoula. Who could was that you? Was that? that you calling that game? That was it. <laughs> hmm. There's the play to Morris up the middle. Of course, I only waited 120 <laughs> years for a win over there, but, you know, I can be pretty stubborn. That's right. Well, that was a big win for Montana State. One of the many highlights of uh, Travis Lule and his outstanding career at Montana State, which is not yet over. Well, after tonight, one more game with the Cats and the Grizz, and then we'll see what happens as the Bobcats use their third and final timeout. We have been uh, to California and here in Cheney and, and of course, at uh, Bobcat Stadium for four games. And uh, along the way, we've watched a pretty good football team this fall, and it has been a lot of fun. Rip Cook, our director of, of our football broadcast through the Montana Sports Network. Let's check in on the Grizz score again. And right now, Montana taking a 14-7 lead over Sacramento State as the Grizz look to stay in the thick of the Big Sky Conference race. 
you touched a little bit Rip Cook and all the crew here and uh, all the uh, people who have made it such a great year just doing a wonderful job behind the scenes making it easy for us and making us uh, uh, look as good as they possibly could and that's a lot of work it's not, right yeah, there. It's not easy to do and uh, when we're in places like this and outdoors and even in the stadium this year with some less than perfect weather that the uh, people operating the cameras out there. Oh yeah up there cold uh, and windy we're, we're in here in the warm press box and not much fun. They do an outstanding job for us so fourth down now and Pier boom looks like he will throw the football kind of airs it out and this one's going to be intercepted inside the 10 at the five yard line. They remember his first completed pass this year was to the Bobcats. Toff Grenfell that's as good as a punt because Montana State will start from their five yard line. You're right uh, probably uh, in a situation like that be better off just knocking it down and get on it back of the line of scrimmage. But an INT is an INT and again he has time, but he just kind of lays it up there. The big weather balloon can almost signal a fair catch on that one. So Montana State will get the football one last time in this game with 3.37 to go. And Lule will stay in at quarterback. As Gatewood across the middle, and he is absolutely annihilated at the 15-yard line. He was level is the best way you can describe that one. Quick in on the stop and see what this game has done at that guy's hairline. Yeah. <laughs> well, well he remember this catch in the morning. Well maybe he won't. Boy. Well the good news is he was kind of losing his footing when the train came through the <laughs> gate. Hangs on to the football though, up to the 16. That's a first down catch. And Justin Dominic makes the catch. He'll take it over the 20 yard line. He's upended. Clock continues to run. They'll give you the short ones. Yeah. Lule will take the short ones because in the one on one situation, you may have a receiver who can break away for the big one. But right now, they're not going to get beat deep. They're going to keep everything in front of them if they can. That's why you see Lule with some time. They're dropping deep. So he has to bring him underneath. Give him eight on the play. Well, Travis continues to wing the football here. And as we come down to the final couple of minutes, this time calls his own number. That's a first down and a whole lot more as Lule takes it up over the 40 yard line in a first down. Well, he, he's going to end up being almost the leading rusher again tonight, too, with, uh, with that gainer right there. But he sees it all the way. They're playing pass defense deep, dropping off. So he finds a hole, takes off, and they'll start the clock again. What I think will be interesting, Dean, regardless of who wins the Big Sky Conference, and I know it will have a bearing on how the 1AA playoffs are shaped, but uh, the Big Sky Conference is the number one rated 1AA conference in the nation. It will be interesting to see how many, te a, how many teams are going to go, if it's going to be uh, one, two, three. Um, the problem this year is that the teams that aren't going to win the Big Sky have three and four losses. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens ultimately after next week. And I think it was the selection show a week from tomorrow. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that is the strength of the league. And in this fourth quarter, heavy dose of Ryan Cole keeping it on the ground and using up the clock for Eastern Washington. I'd say he got stuck by Ryan Force, wouldn't you? <laughs> I would say. That's when you call your insurance agent. You got a major <laughs> dent right there. Second down for Montana State. Travis will throw this one out of bounds on the incomplete path. Well, what's your feeling, Dean? I mean, where do we go? Uh, where does the big sky go this year in the one double A? Do you think there's a possibility that three go? Do you think it's two? What, what's your call? Oh, I think you're probably going to get two. Mm -hmm. I would almost uh, say for sure two. Three would be a stretch, but it depends again on what everybody else does. And let's say next week, as an example, the Bobcats beat the Grizz. You're going to go into that one probably ranked number four or whatever. And uh, Bill Lamberty thinks we'll just get one. That's it. He doesn't think there'll be any more than one. <laughs> the eternal optimist over there. 
Well, he's uh, probably got his uh, hand closer to the pulse. Yeah, going to be short of the first down. The uh, so, in other words, I think uh, maybe what you're telling us, Bill, is with Eastern's win here tonight, they in effect have taken themselves and the Cats right out of it, right? So yeah. That's it. Well, I think in it, the, we talked about that at the beginning of the show, that the, the only real way for Eastern to get into the postseason would be to win the Big Sky, and, of course, that meant a win today. And uh, their conference season over at 5-2 and two with the non-conference game next week, so they can sit back and see what happens now on the final weekend. That ball incomplete, and that'll turn it over to Eastern, and that's the football game for the Eagles. Bobcats out of timeouts. Bobcats out of football. The Eagles have a minute 19 to kill off, and they're uh, sitting at five and two. The old come and get us. Well, that's the you know in, in this league anymore. As good as as teams are, um, it's one thing to win at home, but it's quite another to find ways to win on the road. Bobcats got the one in Weber State, which positioned themselves for a run at the title late in the season. But uh, picking up one or two road wins in the conference is very, very difficult. And uh, for Montana State, the one against Weber State, maybe not enough this season. Bobcats more plays tonight, more total yards than the Eastern Washington. And short on the scoreboard, 35-14. Lule more yards passing than Meyer. Lule uh, uh, leading rusher tonight in the ball game, et cetera. But uh, not enough. Not enough. Too many mistakes, drop passes, fumble snaps, interception for touchdowns, and then just letting Eastern come up with, not letting Eastern, but uh, Eastern coming up with the big plays, and the Bobcats just could not uh, keep them away. Up 7 to nothing, and then gave up uh, 35 unanswered points to trail 35-7 to seven and tried to play catch up and uh, didn't. Montana State will fall to 6-4 and four on the season, 4-2 and two in the Big Sky Conference, 6-4 and four for the Eagles, 5-2. and two to close out the Big Sky Conference as they'll take Anita in this ball game. And again, the dominance by Eastern over Montana State, particularly here in Cheney, continues as they will add one in the overall series lead and pick up a big win. So head coach Mike Kramer and his team, it's back to work tomorrow as they get set to prepare for the Cats Grizz next Saturday in Bozeman. Sellout crowd at Sales Stadium for sure as Montana Still playing for the Big Sky title. The Cats still in the mix. Eastern Washington get the gets the job done today from their end. And we'll go one more week. Well, last year took an overtime great comeback in uh, Bozeman to win at Eastern. And this year they got the lead held on and uh, just took it home. And uh, congratulations to the Eagles because they're in the driver's seat right now. There's your final from Cheney. The Eagles from Eastern Washington beat Montana State. 35 to 14 when we come back our post game show from Woodward Field stay with us Bobcat Game Day has been brought to you by Toyo Tires, your Montana Ford store, Four Seasons Property Maintenance, Northwestern Energy, dedicated to serving you, the Billings Hotel and Convention Center, and by Transaria. And welcome back to the post-game show, sponsored by the Montana Army National Guard. 35-14, the final score from Cheney. 
Eastern Washington wins big over the Cats from Montana State. And, uh, Dean, as we talked about, time to regroup now for the Bobcats and get ready for Cat Grizz next week in Bozeman. Yeah, normally you'd worry about a team psyche like this after a loss like this, but not really because with the next game being the Grizzly game, if your ball club can't get up for that uh, on its own, <laughs> then you're in deep trouble. So, I mean, this one's over, gone, done, 35-14. That's what the scoreboard says. Forget it, nothing you can do. It's out of your hands, but... You can make a difference, and things could happen if you can uh, beat the Grizz next week in Bozeman. So you got them on your uh, home field, and uh, you too could be 5-2 and two along with Eastern, and the Grizz would be 5-2, and two, but then Eastern would, uh, by virtue of tiebreaker, be your Big Sky Conference champion. Well, Montana State really with a golden opportunity today to really position themselves to be the front runner for the conference. Didn't happen, though. Winning on the road was not to be this afternoon. As you mentioned, Eastern Washington does their job by winning on their home field. And now that sets up the one final game before the 1AA pairings are announced a week from tomorrow. And we'll find out who makes the field for the postseason, but still much to be decided. Let's take a look at the Transaria players of the game. And who else but on the Eastern Washington side of the ball? Eric Meyer went out with a head injury, but 13 to 22, 206. A couple of big plays, a couple of touchdowns, and the difference right there that 12 carries, 48 yards. A surprise because he'd only gained 70 total on the season coming in. Evan Groves, another good game, uh, similar to what he had a week ago. Did a good job blocking. Also 16 carries, 71 yards, and a touchdown for the Bobcats. Evan Groves, uh, late in the season, asserting himself as maybe the new uh, tailback for Montana State. 100 yards last week against Sacramento State. Another solid day today with 71 yards on the ground and a losing cause for MSU. So those are your Transaria players of the game today as we wrap things up from Cheney, where Eastern Washington has the big win over the Bobcats from MSU. Still waiting to see what other games come down. Of course, Montana, as we said, playing at Sacramento State. They lead 14-7. to It looks like Portland State it will eliminate uh, Weber State from Big Sky contention. So that's the story from Cheney. There's your final score, 35-14. to 14. For Dean Alexander, I'm Chris Byers saying thanks for watching. And as we leave you, note all the people that make Bobcat Game Day possible. Until next time, so long, everyone. <laughs>